And a very pleasant good evening and welcome to South Umpqua High School Football. Tonight from Frosty Lowry Field in Tri-City, it's the 2014 Far West League op- opener between the Sayusla Vikings and your South Umpqua Lancers. Hello everyone, I'm Brent Newton along with my broadcast partner Ken Sherman. SU comes into this contest 2-1 and one on the year, coming off last Friday's 13-7 come-from-behind victory at Banks, a game in which the Lancers were shut out until late in that contest. They tied it up with three minutes to go and a Kyler Merritt touchdown run with just over one minute remaining and the Lancers able to get the stop late and they won it 13-7 to finish out the non-league schedule at 2-1. and one. Tonight they'll take on a Sayusla team who is one of the better 4A football programs in the state over the past few years. They are 3-0 and this season, and last year these two teams met, and South Umpqua lost 28-21 in a hard-fought contest in Florence. It should be another tight ball game tonight here in Tri-City. We'll take a quick time out, and I'll come back and talk with head coach Steve Stebbins. The pregame show is next on DouglasCountySportsOnline.com. Dell's Building Supply has been an active member of the Myrtle Creek Tri-City community for more than 50 years. Dell's is also proud to sponsor its local students and a variety of school programs, including South Umpqua High School Athletics. Owner Jeff Johnson and his staff wish all answer teams success this season. Dell's Building Supply, 102 South Old Pacific Highway in Myrtle Creek. Go Lancers! Kids who play sports are healthier than those who don't. They learn discipline, teamwork, and life habits that promote achievement. Kids in sports form strong social skills, develop confidence, enjoy a high standard of mental health, and often become solid building blocks of the community. As the local teams play out this season, they'll learn about a lot more than competing in games. They'll learn life lessons that can be gained nowhere else. That's why Clint Newell Auto Group supports local youth athletics. And welcome back to the pregame show. I'm Brian Newton, and joining me for the first time this season is South Umpqua head football coach Steve Stebbins. Coach, uh, your team coming off an exciting come-from-behind win last Friday at Banks. Yeah, exciting was true. We uh, we played great defense for four quarters, outstanding defense, really proud of our defense. And we kind of snunk up the board offensively for three and a half quarters and put two drives together to pull out a victory. It was good for our kids uh, to stay after and play a tough game where we shot ourselves in the foot the whole game with penalties and mistakes and, and still come out with a victory. So it was good for our, it was a good experience for our kids. And and learning how to play on a long road trip because we've got a long road trip to Brookings next week. So that was, that was another reason we scheduled the game. Now, offensively, a lot of teams uh, expect a lot from SU. We've got some talent offensively last year and then this year as well. But it's been a little bit slow. Uh, are you a little concerned at where the offense is at this point of the season? Uh, I'm not concerned. We're, we're a different team than we were last year. Last year, you got to remember, we had three guys in Dakota and Christian and Marcus who were kind of explosion type of players who at any moment could take any play and take it to the house. Where this year, we, we're not, we don't have the team speed we had last year. We're a little bit more methodical, three, four, five yards at a time. We're, we've got to grind it down the field. That's just, that's just the makeup of our team. And, I mean, that's how we are, and there's nothing much we can do about it other than five yards at a time and, keep, and, and get ready for the next play. Now your team's two and one after three games of the season. Uh, when the uh, first practice started, where did you think you would be at this point? Well, it's funny because a couple of our coaches came in who work outside the the school, and and people saw our non-league schedule, and, and both those coaches were told, "Well, you guys are going to start 0 and 3." Uh, and uh, you know, I was hoping we'd be two and one at the worst, two and one. I thought I thought we could beat Hidden Valley, and I thought we'd get one of those two. We should have gotten all three. We should be three and zero. Oh. But I'm happy with where we're at. We've learned a lot. We've grown, and uh, and we've got a lot of experience. Those three games to come into this, this first league game. Now it is your first league game. You're taking on the Sayusla Vikings. Tell us a little about your opponent. <laughs> Well, first off, South Umpqua hasn't beaten Sayusla in 13 years, so we we got to we got to get past that one. Uh, you'll watch them; they're they're they don't do a lot. They're very simple, but what they do, they're very disciplined and do it very well. And they have a they're faster than us. 
which we've seen already this year. But uh, they have really good skill kids. Uh, the running back, Billy Jones, their quarterback, Dotson, and their two outside receivers run well. So it's, it's going to be a chore for us tonight. It'll be interesting. Now, will you try anything differently? Will we see anything differently uh, offensively or defensively uh, to combat that speed? We might because they're a veer, they're, they're, their base bread and butter offensive play is the veer option, so we might jump into a little 50 look defensively just to give them a different look than what they've seen on film from us. Offensively, hey, we're going to be the same. We're going we're gonna to pound it and see what we can do. And how's health of your club coming into this one? We're pretty healthy. We had some guys banged up last week, but I think we've got pretty much everyone healthy this week. I feel good coming to this. We, got a little, we still got some sickness running through the team like we did last week, but we're healthier than we were last week, so I feel good about that. And finally, Coach, uh, Far West Lake season obviously kicking off. Everyone's played three games. Uh, has it kind of panned out what you've seen so far with the other five teams in the Far West League? Uh, yes and no. I mean, I, we expected North Bend to be really good, and we expect Sayuslaw to be really good. And, and uh, I knew Douglas was going to be young, but I, I thought they'd be better than the record-wise than they are right now. Um, Brookings is the one that kind of shocked me. We saw them at the Jamboree, and I thought they'd be off to a better start than they are right now. But, it, it, I mean, there's a couple shocks, but then there's a couple predictables. So, <laughs> yeah, it is what it is. We'll find out in the next five weeks how good everyone is. Yeah, that is true. And you were able to stop a streak last year with getting that first Far West League win. Hopefully you can uh, stop another streak tonight. Best of luck. Thank you. Head coach Steve Stebbins, pregame show continues on DouglasCountySportsOnline.com. Just like the team that lines up and runs the ball up the middle, Shop Smart doesn't rely on fancy gimmicks or trick plays. All you'll find at your neighborhood Shop Smart are direct deals for the best prices on the products you need most. Need a first down on third and one? Pull back up the middle. Need prices on groceries that won't break the family bank? Head to Shop Smart. Proud to support today's local football. Shop Smart. Where savings are in the bag. Did you know Dutch Bros Coffee roasts all of their own coffee fresh every day? We have individual relationships with the farmers that harvest our coffee to ensure that there's no compromise in any step of the process. From the farmer to the cup, we guarantee satisfaction. It says so at the bottom of every cup. Drive through one of our convenient locations today and put our world-renowned speed, award-winning service, and unprecedented quality to the test. All of our locations are locally owned and operated to strengthen community involvement. Visit www.dutchbros.com today. And welcome back to South Umpqua High School. I'm Brent Newton as both teams on the field. We're about ready to go here. This is going to be a short pregame, so i got to introduce my partner for the night, Kenny Sherman. Good to have you along, Ken. Hey, Brent, thank you. This is going to be fun. I don't think we've done a game together in 20-some-odd years. <laughs> Ever, <laughs> I think. I think. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh... This will be fun, though. I mean, I mean, this feels like football weather, finally. You know, we've had 90-degree weather. Now it feels like, you know, it's like you said at the beginning, frosty and, and cold. Uh, this is good football weather, finally. Yeah, and real quick, just tell us what you know about the uh, the Vikings. Well, they're the number three ranked team according to the OSAA Power Rankings. They uh, average about 42 points a game. They circle around their their senior Joe Dodson. Speaking of seniors, I mean, they got all the kids back from the team that went to the playoffs last year. They lost in the first round to Gladstone, but uh, Joe Dodson, the quarterback, Billy Jones had three touchdowns and a kickoff return last uh, last weekend. Kristen Jacobson, another one of their seniors, uh, really good. Kenneth Thrall, a big back. So, uh, they, like the coach said, there's a lot of speed on this team. Uh, they're a very good team. They got a lot of they got a lot of, lot of players back. So, uh, I think the defense for South Umpqua is going to be the big deal tonight to try to stop this offense they have. And folks, that'll do it for the pregame show. As this, wow, we're ready. Interview, yeah, longer interview than I expected, and they are on time. In fact, they're a little bit early. It's still we got a 6:59, but they're on the field, ready to go. They're going to tee this one up. South Umpqua is going to get the football first. Back deep to receive Sean Rigsby, standing about the 15-yard line, along with Kevin Avery. It's going to be a short kick, angled toward the Sayusla sideline. It's going to be taken at about the. 35 up across the 40 to near the 45 yard line on the return I believe is that number 6 or number 9 that looks like number that is Nathan Thompson number 9 Nathan Thompson one of the up men getting the short kick and returning it about 10 yards ball the point of the football just touching the 45 yard line to the Lancers will have the football first we'll see if they can get something going offensively they struggled a bit 
this season, especially early in games. It's taken them a while to get going through the first three games of the season, see what they can do on their opening possession. Eric Johnson, the talented senior signal caller, six foot 160 from the shotgun, calls out the signal, so I'll hand it to, uh, that's Kennedy, Matt Kennedy getting the start at tailback. He's tripped up, and he gets back to the line of scrimmage. No gain, second down and 10. Nice play there by Marco Bliss. He came up right through the middle and uh, and stopped the ball carrier right at the, about the line of scrimmage. So second and 10 coming into the football game with the play. That's Cody Gray, talented sophomore for the Lancers. Josh Reed will check out. Big offensive line. Caleb Newton is the center. 5'10", 215. He is a junior. Tyler Vay, 5'9", 225, a junior. Jordan McDevitt, he is 6'1", 255, a senior. And then the big boys, Mason Ronan, 5'10", 230, a senior. Trevor Duffy, 6'3", 305, a senior. Johnson will throw a little wide receiver screen to, or intended for Rigsby. And just missed time, miscommunication, everything there, incomplete. Third down and 10. 11.07 11.07 to go here from Frosty Lowry Field. Just underway in this one. Far West League opener. Really, you don't know much about either team yet. The Lancers 2-1. and one. They're one loss here at Frosty Lowry in overtime to North Valley. They could very easily be unbeaten. So I used to lost 3-0. and oh. So we'll find out what each team really has to offer. As two very good Far West League teams going at it here in the league opener for both these clubs. They're going to hand the ball to Kennedy. Comes around the right side, gets through a hole, breaks a tackle near the first down across the 40 to 45, close with that spot. He's going to have the first down. He needed 10, he got 10. That was a great play there. I think they caught Sayusla off guard. They figured they were going to throw it, you know, with a third down and 10, but Kennedy goes, and now they're doing the the hurry-up offense now. It is first down and 10 for Matt Kennedy and the South Umqua Lancers. 10.50 10.50 and counting here. No huddle. Split to the left side is Cody Gray. Ball on the near hash mark. Cameron Everett, talented tight end, lined up to the right side. Boy, he's got that triple option. Look at that formation. Full, full house backfield. Three backs with Johnson. They're going to give it left side for Kennedy, and he's going to just get across the 45. Lunging forward, they'll give him the 47. Gain of two. thought I was watching a college team there for a minute with that full backfield like that. Not really a formation you see much from Steve Stebbins in this offense. Again, Everett split to the near side. Back there, that is number 56, lined up to the left side of Eric Johnson. That's Tanner Pence. And then to the right side is Thompson. They'll hand it to Kennedy. He'll go right side, gets through a hole, slithers through across the 40, down to the 38-yard line, brings up third down and short, call it third and three. If they can keep this running game going and keep that high-powered Sayusla offense off the field, it's working. And Kennedy's getting a good chunk of change every time he runs the ball. Yeah, Coach Stebbins said that he's not concerned about the big guys up front. They're they're actually small, Sayusla, but they've got a lot of speed in the skill positions. So the Lancers, they've got the size in this one, trying to use it to their advantage. That same full house backfield. Kennedy, short side of the field, gets the block, first down, and driven out of bounds. He needed three, he got four, and they'll move the chains first and 10 SU. This kid has some great vision. He puts his hand on his blocker behind him and tells him which way he's going, and and, uh, this kid's running hard. It's fun to watch. Johnson bringing the offense up, going without the huddle. Josh Reed split wide to the left side. To the near side is the talented Sean Rigsby, junior wide out. They'll keep it on the ground. Kennedy goes right, cuts left across the 30, down to the 28. Nice gain on first down. Picks up a good six yards. Brings up second and four. Not a big crowd yet. It's, it's slowly filling up here. There's still room. Student section. Probably 40 or 50 strong. The band out in full force again. Nice, fun atmosphere here at Frosty Lowry Field. Second and four. Johnson calls out the signals. You guessed it. Give it to Kennedy. Hit at the line of scrimmage. And he's going to be taken down right there. First guy there. I think that's number 11. That's Kristen Jacobson. Yep, that's Jacobson. one of the running backs and linebackers that got up in there. Definite two-down territory here. 8.45 and counting. Opening drive of this football game. Lancers have it. 
third down and four. Inside the 30-yard line of Sayusla. Johnson with two receivers to the left side. I believe that's Kelly and Josh Reed. Handed off to Kennedy. Short side of the field. Turns the corner. First down. Breaks the tackle. Lunges to the 20-yard line. First and 10 SU. So the Lancers just keeping it on the ground. Just impressive. This is great. Eat up the clock. The junior tailback, Kyler Merritt, 5'80", 160, checks into the game. It looks like they're going to go with that full house backfield again as Pence and Nathan Thompson back there with Merritt. So it's Johnson in the shotgun, Pence to his left, Thompson to his right, and Merritt lined up behind him. And I guess Coach Stebbins is just going to stick with what's working, but Sayusla will take a timeout here with... 8.18 to go, and they want to talk things over, Ken. Yeah, the coach is out there waving his arms and trying to explain to him, hey, they're running the ball at you. You need to stop them. This, I'm, I'm just reading his lips is what I'm doing. But, you know, it's, that's, yeah, it's, uh, right now they're uh, just running the ball down, down their throat right now. It's good. It's impressive. Eric Johnson 0 for 1. Tried the little screen outside to Rigsby, and they could not hook up. That's it. The rest have been on the ground, mainly Matt Kennedy. And now he's getting a breather, and it's going to be Kyler Merritt. who had the big touchdown run last week. Ended up being the winning score. So here we go again in the shotgun. That is Eric Johnson, Pence to his left. And that's not Tucker Pence. It's the older brother, Tanner Pence, the 6'1", 180-pound senior lineman. To his left, Thompson to his right, Merritt behind Johnson. The snap to Eric. They'll hand it to Merritt. Gets through the hole. Nice little move. Spins. Does a 360 and lunges forward to about the 11-yard line. And the Lancers are close to another first down. So far, so good for the running game right now. Merritt can go. Yeah, it's running game's going well. So it's going to be second down and short, about a yard. Same formation, full house backfield. Johnson calling out the signals. Snap, hand it to Merritt. Right side, tripped up, stumbles forward, but he... Kept his footing long enough to get inside the 10, and he should pick up the first down. Needed a yard, got about a yard and a half, and now the referee will stop the clock. No, he's going to say first down. He eyed the sticks and said, you got it, first and 10. It looks like it's going to be first and goal now from the 9. Is that where they marked it at, I think? Yeah, it's inside the 10, so they've got to score four downs to get it in. First down and goal from the 9. Full house backfield again. We'll hand it to Merritt. Try the left side. Gets around the corner. Hits spun. Hit hard and gets to about the five-yard line. Pick up of about four. Second down and goal from the five. I mean, they've got the size advantage, as I mentioned, on that left side. they got... On the right side, it looks like McDevitt and Ronan. Caleb Newton, the center on the left side. Vey and Duffy's over there. They followed Trevor this last time. Same formation. Thompson to the right of Johnson. Pence to his left. Merritt behind Eric. The snap. He faked the handoff, looking to throw, got pressure. Johnson rolls to his right, throws for the end zone. Caught Everett, touchdown. South Umpqua. Cameron Everett, and the Lancers lead 6 nothing. He's 1-1 one one now. <laughs> <laughs> nice play.
And the extra point is good from the Lancers, and they lead it 7 nothing. We'll take a timeout. 6.42 to go. SU on top early. Hey, Mom, I have something you should meet. Something or someone? Something. It's my perfect food. It's your what? It's my perfect food. Not only does it taste great, it's packed with protein and calcium. It's my perfect healthy snack. Plus, it's made locally with RBST hormone-free milk, fresh from Oregon Dairy Farms. Okay, I'll bite. What's the name of your perfect food? It's my cottage cheese, from Umpqua Dairy, of course. Umpqua Dairy. Mom, daughter, and quality checked approved since 1931. You see their trucks along highway construction sites and rolling to jobs throughout the community. Knife River Material. Materials. The name is synonymous with high-quality products and great service. And you can have that solid Knife River experience at your home or office as well. Knife River products and materials are created right here and are rigorously tested before being applied. If you're putting in a pool, pool sidewalk, or driveway, tell your contractor to use Knife River Materials because you deserve the best. Knife River. They've been serving Douglas County for over 50 years. Renewed along with Ken Sherman is... The Lancers look good in that opening drive, Ken, just keeping it on the ground. That's right. They threw a little a little quick pass, and then it went incomplete, but then they just give it right and left. They went left with uh, Everett and just kind of kept it on the ground, ran some clock out, and uh, eventually scored on for, for a Johnson pass to, to Cam Everett. Extra Five. point good, 7 nothing. Five yards out, Johnson to Everett, and the Lancers lead it 7-zip. They'll kick it off. High short kick. Taking about the 26-yard line, going right up the middle, across the 30. Goes left, 35, hit, going across the 40, and gets to about the 42. That is a nice return. I believe that's number eight, Preston Mitchell for Sayuslav. So Sayuslav will have a, have a good starting position. As they'll put the football down. Officially at the 41-yard line, so first down at 10 for Sayusla. So we'll see how the Lancers do defensively. They only gave up seven points in that law or that win last Friday at Banks. And here we go, first down at 10 for Sayusla. They've got backs split behind their quarterback. He's a good one, Joseph Dotson. He'll look to throw, and is that tipped? At the line? That was tipped at the line, yeah. yeah. Looking right side, just a short pass. It was tipped in the air and just flutters, hits the turf incomplete. Second down and 10. The quarterback is Joseph Dotson, 6'2", 180. He is the senior. Billy Jones, the quick, speedy tailback, 5'6", 140. He's a senior. Christian Jacobson, 5'10", 170, a senior. Good skilled players. They're going to try the option. He's hit hard. Ronan just... Stood up Dotson and drove him back. They'll give him forward progress. And it's good. Well, it's going to be a loss of one. That wasn't a very good spot. SU will take it. It's going to be third and 11. Looks like they tried the option, but they, they sucked it in so close to the line that Ronan knew exactly what was going on, and he took the quarterback out before he even had a chance to pitch at all. Big hit from Mason Ronan. Caleb Newton playing the middle linebacker position now. They're going to try, well, option right side. They're going to give it to the first back through. He's going to score it across the 45 to about the 47, but he's going to be five yards shy. He picked up six, and that's going to bring up fourth down and six. And I I doubt they're going to go for it here. They're thinking about it. Now they're going to run the punt team on. And on to punt the football. Looks like. Kenneth Thrall, 5'7", 210-pound punter. He's a big kid. He was kicking some field goals earlier, too. Sebastian Janikowski looking. Yeah. Like the old Elkland Raider exactly. kicker. Or current Raider kicker. Yeah. Here's Avery coming up to take it at the 25. Got some room. 30, 35 hit and dropped at the 37. Nice return. Kevin Avery. The Lancers will have their second possession. They march down the field, capped off by a five-yard touchdown strike from Eric Johnson to Cameron Everett, the talented junior tight or senior tight end. And it is a seven-nothing game. Five sixteen to go, opening quarter. The Lancers, after a three and out for the Vikings, they've got it back. Kennedy back in the tail back. Everett and Re, or excuse me, Kelly will shift to the left side. 
Coming in motion is Rigsby. Snapped to Johnson. They'll hand it to Rigsby, and there's all kinds of trouble. Penalty flags everywhere. A little bit of movement there on South Umpqua. Two guys jumped a little bit when, when, the, uh, when Rigsby came across the line. Legal procedure against the offense, so it's going to be five yards. First and 15, they'll march it back to about the 32-yard line. First down out around the 47. Must be training day for officials. We have five officials at this ballgame. They had five the uh, second game of the year that I was here, North Valley. So we've got... Everett again, and Reed looks like the same play. They'll shift to the left side. Rigsby most likely is going to come in motion. He will. Johnson looking at him, takes the snap. He's going to hand the ball to Rigsby. Leading the way is Kennedy. Rigsby, can he turn the corner? No. He's going to be taken down about the 35-yard line. He picked up a couple. A good pursuit by the Vikings in their road white uniforms with the yellow pants and the, I guess you call them gold helmets. I don't know, yellow helmets. Yeah. <laughs> Kind of tough to see. They've got the white tops with the yellow numerals and the little blue trim. Once it gets a little darker than this, you're not going to be able to see them at all. Thank goodness it's not raining. Yeah. <laughs> you wouldn't be able to see anything. That would be a mess, wouldn't it? Lancers in the home, black uniforms, black helmets, black jerseys, black pants. They'll hand the ball to Kennedy, try the right side. He'll cut it inside now. Tried to get to the corner, but decided to cut it inside, and he gets to the 38-yard line. That looks like about the... Yeah, 39, so it's going to bring up about second or third down and eight, we'll call it. Third down and eight for the Lancers. They're looking over to the sideline. Now Nathan Thompson will check into the football game. Alex Kelly will check out. Clock moving 4.15 and counting. They better be careful. Got to get this play off here. They're taking their time. Thompson will be lined up to the right side. He's in the slot. Rigsby to his right. Two receivers, three receivers. Trips left. Johnson empty backfield, takes the snap, looking across the middle, throwing for Thompson, caught it, first down, midfield 45 and down to the 43, first down SU. Nice play, just dropped back and did what he had to do, and Thompson was right there across, across the middle, right at the sticks, caught the ball and got some extra yardage for the first down. Big pickup on third down. Third and long, and they picked it up with plenty to spare. It's first down and 10 inside the Vikings, or inside Viking territory. They'll place it at the 43-yard line. Single back, that is Kennedy. He'll get the handoff, hit in the backfield, and drop for a loss of one. That was Thrall. There he is again. Yep. You're talking about Kenneth Thrall. He's a junior, 5'7", like you said, 2'10". He's a punter. Uh, he's also a backup running back as well. He scored a touchdown on interception return last week in that game. Second down and 11 o'clock. Moving quickly here in the opening quarter. 3-15 and counting. 7-0 South Umpqua. They've got the football again. Third or Second down and 11. They will keep it on the ground with Merritt. Big hole left side. Breaks a tackle. First down into the secondary. 30. 25 dropped at the 18, and the Lancers in the red zone again. Just too many big guys up front for the Lancers. They had the size advantage, and Steve Stebb is a talented coach. He knows what he's got when he's got an advantage, and he's just going to keep pushing it. He's got those big boys up front, and they're doing the job for him. Kennedy running in the fir- this qu- earlier on the first drive, and now it's Merritt. They're going to hand the ball to Merritt. He went, might have been a little miscommunication. He started left and then went right. Johnson got him the ball, and five white jerseys there to knock Merritt down for maybe got a yard. Depends on the spot, second and long, as we are under 2.30 to go here in the opening quarter. South Umpqua 7. Sayusla nothing. Lancers on the march again. Rigsby will come out of the game. Cody Gray, the sophomore wideout, will check in. He'll line up the right side. Two receivers split to the left. That's Alex Kelly and Josh Reed, the single setback merit. He'll get it again. 
He'll cut it inside. Nice move inside the 15. And a penalty flag comes in late as they'll mark it down about the 12, but a penalty flag on the turf. Well, Kenneth Thrall is just everywhere. He's a, he's a linebacker, but then he's, he's, he's blitzing in as soon as the ball gets handed off, and, and somebody's not stopping him because he's getting in the backfield disrupting things. But the, the good thing for the Lancers is when he gets in there, he's missing the tackle. And it's going to be against South Thumbqua. Yeah, it's going to be a hold against the Lancers. So they'll put it back at the 23, first down marker around the 8, so second down and 15, exactly two minutes to go. They'll wind the clock here, so second down and long. Reed and Everett split to the left side, now Merritt in the slot. So trips left, empty backfield, two receivers to the near side. That is Nathan Thompson and Sean Rigsby. And now a timeout again. Boy, that's a second Defensive timeout for the Vikings as new for, these new formations. He had five wides there, and Coach Tim Dotson says he didn't like he didn't like what his, how his defense had lined up. Timeout at Sayusla. A couple of different formations. They're just running the ball down their throat right now, and like you said, that that line for South Umqua is doing its job right here early, uh, blowing everybody out, and the and Merritt and and the other runner, and they're just having a field day out here right now, and and. and and the cool thing about this is when your running game is working, you know, why why try to fix it? You know, why try to throw the ball? If you can run for five, six yards at a carry, uh, just keep it on the ground, run the clock down, because you know, you know eventually that they're, that Sayuslaw is going to score with that offense that they have. Yeah, and that they're just they're just big up front. The the Lancers center, Caleb Newton, 5'10, 215. Jordan McDevitt, 6'1, 255. Tyler Vay, 5'9. 225, Mason Ronan, 5'10", 230, Trevor Duffy, 6'3", 305, and they're doing the job tonight, early on, 7 nothing. same formation, five receivers, empty backfield, Johnson takes the snap, and flags again will stop this one, and most likely that's going to be against South Umpqua, well, maybe not, as she's clapping their hands, maybe they jumped in the neutral zone, yeah, that they did. So it's going to be against the Vikings. Trying to time that snap count, and instead they're going to give five yards back to uh, South Umpqua. 142 to go opening quarter. Lancers on the move. South Umpqua already up 7 nothing. Josh Reed wide to the left side on the Vikings side of the field. Everett and Merritt lined up over there. Thompson and Rigsby to the right side. Ball in the near hash mark. Kennedy checks out the defense, takes the snap, plenty of time. Looking down the middle, thrown, it's incomplete. Good cover. Penalty yeah. flag comes in. Good coverage on Nathan Thompson at around the 13-yard line, but a flag came in from the near sideline. Too much good coverage because he was hanging right <laughs> on the back of him when he when he went across, and that's that's going to bring the flag every time. He, was, I, I thought he had a Snoopy blanket on his back. It was he was so tight a coverage right there. Or maybe a Batman blanket. I'm not sure. <laughs> but we're going. So the white hat coming our way, and it's going to be defensive pass interference. And it's still going to be second down. So it'll put the ball at about the 10-yard line. No, it's be about the 9, so call it second and 1. Second down and one. Not an automatic first down. So second and one. Merritt, the single setback. Wide receiver to each side. Reed wide left. Rigsby near side. They'll give it to Merritt. He's tripped up immediately. Just shooting the gap as Jacobson. Third down. So here comes that. Full house backfield formation as number 56 getting in there. That's Tanner Pence, 6'1", 180, a senior. He'll line up to the left side of Johnson. Nathan Thompson to the right side. And behind Eric is Kyler Merritt. Third down at about three. They'll hand it to Merritt. Got some room. Stumbles and 
He was going east and west, not north and south, and he gets knocked down at the 10. Only got about a yard. It's fourth down and two. That was Thrall again, tripping him up. So fourth down and short. Lancer's obviously going to go for it. Johnson, hands on his hips, looking over to the near side. 37 seconds and counting. And now the Lancers want to use a timeout. We'll keep it right here with 35.8 seconds to go. And a big fourth down. Maybe a bigger fourth down, Ken, for Sayusla. Yeah, I think they're going to go over. They'll go to the bench now and figure out how they can stop this thing. They didn't want to go down this much early. I mean, they uh, averaging 40 points a game in Sayusla. But uh, South Lumpkin's defense right now is uh, just giving the ball. The running game is working for him right now, so um, keep it up. Yeah, and that one, for, that one formation is just crazy. Yeah, it's that big, that I've never seen that before in high school. They got the big boys up front. It's not, I guess you'd call it a full house. Typically a full house is the quarterback and then three backs behind him, but they've got one to each side of Johnson, and then Merritt lined up in the tailback position right behind Eric. But It almost looks like a short punt formation of some yeah, kind. But it really yeah. does. So here we go. Look, it looks like Merritt will be the single setback. Trips left for Eric. Three receivers to his left side. Reed wide left. Everett and Kelly out there. Rigsby single coverage to the near side. Fourth down and two from the 10-yard line. Johnson, it's an option. Oh, that's going nowhere. Ball hits the turf. Doesn't matter who gets it. I think Merritt got back on top of it, but it's going to be a turnover on downs, and that was that was going nowhere from the get-go. Yeah, after the timeout, they just they tried to tried something different. That's the first time they they tried that play in this uh, in in this game so far, and didn't work that time. So a big fourth down defensive play for Sayus lot out. So turnover on downs, and the Vikings will get it back with. 28.9 seconds to go. Only their second possession of this opening quarter. Up under center is Dotson. Senior signal caller fakes the handoff, throws the football, and it's in and out of the hands of his intended target. I believe that was... That was Preston Mitchell. Mitchell yeah. All right. Mitchell wears number eight. Oh, those things are so hard to see over there, especially on the far side. Preston Mitchell, the intended target there. So second down at 10. Clock stopped at 24.5. Dotson up under center. He'll pitch it short side of the field. A little bit of running room. Well, now a lot of room, 25. And I think he's close to a first down. I think he might have stepped out short. Yep, I can see him marking the football. Well, it's close. It's going to be third and about a half yard. And they'll put it down about the 28-yard line. Clock stop with 18.3 seconds to go here in the opening quarter. South Umpqua 7, Vikings nothing. So you saw a little quarterback keeper right up the middle. He didn't get a lot, but he kept fighting. Dotson, big kid at 6-2. And he gets the football to the 30-yard line. and Well, the tip of it at the 30. He got the needed yardage. It's first down and 10 for the Vikings. Actually, they're going to put it back at the 29, but it only needed about a half a yard, and that's going to be it for the opening quarter. Head coach Tim Dotson will head out on the field. They'll let the clock run out here in the opening quarter. Three seconds, two, one, and that is it here in the opening quarter from Tri-City. It's South Umpqua 7, Sayusla nothing. Far West League opener for both these teams. Second quarter action next on DouglasCountySportsOnline.com. What's better than a touchdown for your favorite team? Getting a great deal on groceries at your neighborhood Ray's Food Place. Ray's Food Place is your home team with fresh produce, the highest quality meats, tasty bakery items, and everything you need to game play on a party, a tailgater, or just a quick weeknight meal. Ray's is proud to sponsor today's local football action because you support us every day. Ray's Food Place. Family owned, family values since 1956.
Brent Newton along with Ken Sherman. Welcome back to Frosty Lowry Field in Tri-City. 7-0 South Umpqua as we start the second quarter. Saishla has it. They'll try the uh, the uh, option to the near side. And it doesn't work. The pitch taken by number 10. Or is that 20? Billy Jones? Billy Jones. Billy Jones. And he's taken down by three black jerseys. <laughs> and it's going to bring up as a loss of two. Second down and 12. First down out around the... 39-yard line ball right now around the 27. Is that correct? Yep. So second and long for the 27. Dotson up under center, coming in motion. Mitchell, they'll give him the handoff, and he's going to be taken down. As Ronan just rode him down, jumped on his back and threw him down. Mason Ronan, the linebacker, gets a stop. He'll come out of the game. Caleb Newton will check in. 11.20 to go first half. Fast-moving first half so far. Both teams just keeping it on the ground. Dotson, 6'2", 180, the senior signal caller up under center. Back split behind him, receiver to each side. Dotson calls out the signals, looking to throw. Left side, caught, first down, 45, and taken down at the 47 on the coverage. That's Eric Kramer, first down Vikings. Nice catch over there by Preston Mitchell. I think Mitchell's on the near side. That's number three. Oh, Scott Gordon. I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. Mitchell's eight. You can't see him on that far side very well. It's dark over there. Ball hits the turf. Big rugby scrum in the middle. Lancers say they have it. No call yet. Yes, they do. They do. Well, I didn't even see the fumble. Was it a minute? Uh, I was looking down, writing down Scott Gordon's name. When I look up, I just see a bunch of bodies battling for a football, and the Lancers come up with a turnover. Johnson tried the option play right across the line and, and then pitched it out to Billy Jones, and as soon as Billy Jones touched it, the ball came the ball came loose. Billy Jones at 5'6 and 140. He's got good speed. I talked with the talented tailback, the state's leading rusher last season, Dakota Singer, out to cheer on his old alma mater. And Dakota was talking about this Billy Jones kid. Jones, a sprinter, said in districts he lost to Billy Jones. He said Jones is fast, he's talented. But we haven't seen a whole lot from him early on. The Lancers' defense has jumped, done a nice job keeping the Vi- – well, actually, the offense of the Lancers has kept the Vikings' defense or offense off the field as they've been able to just methodically run time off this clock, scoring on the first possession, but they got stopped deep in Vikings' territory on a fourth down and short. They couldn't make it. This is the third possession of the game for – the Lancers, they pick up a couple on first down, so it's second down and long. Johnson from the shotgun, standing right at midfield. He's going to fake the handoff, keep it himself. He's athletic, breaks a tackle. Can he get to the corner? Nope, they grab him by the ankles. But Johnson got across the 45 and down to about the 42-yard line. Good pickup, brings up a third down and a makeable four. That was a great fake to Kennedy because Kennedy was – Coming out this way, and three Vikings followed Kennedy out here, and then they turn around, and, and Johnson's with the ball going the other way. Josh Reed split to the near side of the field. Rigsby to the right side, double tight end. Kelly and Everett, the single setback is Matt Kennedy. They're rotating tailbacks here, Merritt and Kennedy. Right now it's Matt Kennedy. He'll get the carry right side. Now cuts it inside. Nice move, and he lunges near the first down marker inside the... 40-yard line to about the 38, and it's going to be fourth and maybe a, oh, we'll call it fourth and one, and SU looks like they're going to go for it, and here comes the big boys again, Cody Gray, Kyler Merritt will check in along with Tanner Pence. They get the play call, 8.55 to go first half, 7 nothing South Umpqua. Big fourth down here, fourth down and one. Full house backfield. Thompson and to the right side of Kennedy. Pence to his or to of Johnson. Pence to his left and Merritt, the single setback, and now 
SU will use their second timeout. So each team has used two timeouts already here in the first half. So they'll come over on this fourth down play, make sure they, everybody knows where they're going to be at, what positions they're going to be, and, and uh, set that full house backfield in motion again and see if they can get this first down and keep going. Well, this is a fast, fast game. Yeah, very fast. Keeping the clock moving by running the football. I want to congratulate September's Booster Club Athletes and Students of the Month in cross country, Ashley Orozco and John Valdivinos. Football, Jordan McDevitt and Mason Ronan. And volleyball, Mackenzie Davis. From the cheerleading squad, Brittany Briggs. And from the soccer clubs, Nathan Galinsky and Becca Carnes. Freshman, George Dintelman. Sophomore, Christina Johnson. Junior, William Warner. And senior, Tanner Pence. Congratulations to September's Booster Club Athletes and Students of the Month. Steve Stebbins will head off the field, smile on his face. Always enjoy talking with Steve, his wife in the bunker to our left. Joining us for this broadcast, Brent Newton along with Ken Sherman. Here we go, fourth down and short. They'll give it to Merritt, first down, right side, and he's got a little bit more to about the 35. He got plenty. They'll move the chains, first down, Lancers. Got to give Mr. Guthrie his first down time there. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> his famous little, what is it, saying? Uh, every time SU gets a first down, he says another Lancer first down, and the crowd reacts every time he does it. Nice move by Merritt. He breaks a tackle. He gets across the 30 and down inside to about the 28. Looked like a gain of a couple, but he broke away from a tackle, got out of a little pile of white jerseys and was able to get inside the 30 to the 28. Good pickup of about six. Thrall was slow to get up that time. He tripped up Merritt and he was slow to get up and trotted off to the sidelines. The coach was looking at him. First down around the 24 yard line. It's second down and four. Full house backfield again. Merritt this lined up behind Johnson. He'll get the handoff right side. Same play that got him the first down but he's tripped up as Shooting through the gap. Somebody with the six on their jersey. Is that Simon Gonzalez? I'm not positive. Somebody got in there and just tripped up Merritt. He stumbled forward to get about two, maybe three yards. It's going to bring up third down and about a yard and a half for South Umpqua. Pence and Thompson lined up on each side of quarterback Eric Johnson. Kyler Merritt is the tailback. They will hand the football to Merritt. He'll go left side, first down, breaks a tackle. He's got a chance to go inside the 20, but it, uh, one man to beat, and he got him at about the 18-yard line, and the Lancers move the chains. This young man is very quick and, and very agile as this Merritt kid, and uh, he's fun to watch. Yeah, Kyler Merritt's a good one. Only a junior, Matt Kennedy. He is a senior tailback, and then they've got a sophomore who's actually pretty good himself. Young man by the name of Tucker Pence, 5'10", 150. Same formation. Johnson will hand it to Merritt for the, on the right side, and he's going to be tripped up. Somebody got his legs out from underneath him, but he got a little bit of a positive gain out of it to about the 16. Second down and eight for SU as the clock moves under seven at 6.50 and counting opening half here. Lancers seven. And Sayusla, nothing. Substitutions defensively for the Vikings. They might be wearing out a little bit. Kenneth Thrall coming back in the ball game. Johnson calling out the signals. Man to each side. They'll hand it to Merritt again. Breaks through the left side. 15, 10, 5, and spun down at the 6-yard line. As the Viking had an angle on Merritt, I couldn't tell from here. It looked like he might be able to just angle for that corner, but he was spun down at the six-yard line. First and goal, SU. So the Lancers, four downs to try to get it in here. They already have the 7 nothing advantage. 
Same formation again, but Merritt will take a break here. He's worn out. Kennedy is in the game. He'll get the handoff. Goes right side. Cuts through near the goal line. He keeps those legs churning, and the linemen are pushing him forward, but they're going to say his progress was stopped at about the three. They just kept pushing and pushing that pile, trying to Kennedy ended up about the one, but they say his progress... They're going to stop the play about the three-yard line. That's going to bring up second down and goal. No huddle. Hand it again to Kennedy. Go left side, breaks a tackle, but he cannot get... Oh, he did get in. Touchdown, SU. He got the football across the goal line, and the Lancers lead at 13-0. Try the extra point. The placement, the kick is up, and it is good. 5.33 to go. First half. Lancer stretched the lead 14 nothing. When I hear the word bistro, I flash back to Europe and immediately smell the alluring aroma of deep, rich coffee, followed by fresh baked pastries, the hearty soups. But you don't have to have a European flashback for a true bistro experience. Just swing into SoCo Coffee. They have the same handmade croissants, bagels, big fat cinnamon rolls, and the breakfast sandwiches, the soups, the salads, all homemade and all backed up with organic fair trade coffees. For the European experience, eat and hang out by the fire. Or if you're in an all-American hurry, just hit the drive through at SoCo Coffee in Myrtle Creek on Main next to Advanced Eye Care. Dell's Building Supply has been an active member of the Myrtle Creek Tri-City community for more than 50 years. Dell's is also proud to sponsor its local students and a variety of school programs, including South Umpqua High School Athletics. Owner Jeff Johnson and his staff wish all answer team success this season. Dell's Building Supply. 102 South Old Pacific Highway in Myrtle Creek. Go Lancers! And welcome back to Frosty Lowry Field in Tri-City. Brent Newton along with Ken Sherman and a good start for the home team. It's the Lancers leading it 14 to nothing. The last score, a three-yard touchdown run from Matt Kennedy. The Josh Bueller extra point good. And it's 14-0 SU with 5.33 to go here in the first half. Ken, another score to pass along. Uh, right now, after one quarter of play, Roseburg and Willamette are tied at zero. No score yet after one quarter at, at Roseburg as they're playing Willamette. Ball will set around the eight-yard line. And that was tough for the land or for the Viking, or Vikings return man. I believe that was number eight. Is that Mitchell? I believe it was. He thought the ball was going to go out of bounds, and it rolled, and then it just stopped just in bounds. The near sideline, so he picked it up. By the time he went a couple of yards, there are about three black jerseys in his face, and he is taken down right at the 15-yard line. So it's first down and 10 for the Vikings at their own 15 with 5.30 to go here in the first half. Fast-moving first half. This is the third possession of this game for Sayusla. Split to the near side. That is Scott Gordon. It's going to be a pitch to the left side. It looks like got some room cutting it back. I believe that's Jones, and he's going to be taken down around the 20, gain of around five, second down. Oh, second down and five for the Sayuslav Vikings. Now two receivers lined up to the near side. Back split behind Dotson. Up under center. Straight drop. Looking to throw near side. Staring down his receiver. Got him. Caught it. Turns and he's hit immediately and dropped. On the stop is number 18. That is Tristan Gross. 5'10", 145 pound junior. Jerry Atherton also there on the stop. Excuse me. Jerry, 6'3", 265, a senior. 
picked up four. It's third down and one. They're going to go with that a huddle and just a quarterback keeper. Boy, I don't know if he wow. got it. Well, they're going to give him a good spot because it was Ronan who grabbed him and threw the quarterback back. But with that spot, that should be fine. Yep, first down. We've got a southpaw, the white hat, with the left hand saying yeah. first down, Vikings. <laughs> give him the forward progress. I think Kristen Jacobson was kind of helping him, too. He was standing in the middle of the pile giving him the first down marker. Dotson checking out the defense, back split behind him. First down at 10, looking to throw, got some pressure, set up the screen, and knocking it down as both. That was Cody Gray who knocked it down. Also there was Tanner Pence, and they both just jumped in the face of the quarterback who was trying to set up the screen, and they luckily knocked it down because they might have set that up beautifully. That was a nice play, heads up defense. Too bad it was an INT. They could have ran it back in. So second down and 10. Quickly, Dotson brings the offense up, trying to get something going offensively. He's going to keep it himself, hit and drop, and pulled back Jerry Atherton, Mason Ronan on the stop. Also there is Cody Gray. Boy, they converge on that one in a hurry, and it's going to bring up third down and a whole bunch as we are nearing the four-minute mark here of the first half. And the Vikings going without the huddle. Looks like they're a little confused. Now they're going to... Step to the line of scrimmage. Dotson with back split behind him. Calls out the signals. Third down and ten. Straight drop. Pressure. There's a blitz. He's going to try to get away from it. Moving to his left. Throws downfield. He gets caught first down as Gray makes, or no, excuse me, that's Matt Kennedy. Boy, he just gave him too much room. He just went about 11 yards on the Sioska side. Just stopped right there and waited for the throw from Dotson. First down. Big first down Vikings. Got out of the pressure did the quarterback Dotson and, and finally found a receiver right at the stick like you were talking about and it was a nice catch there nice play Dotson just kept that play alive with his athleticism and was able to complete the pass will hand the football there's some room on the left side and taken down at the 45 yard line will bring up about a well that's a gain of about seven it'll bring up second and three Another nice run there for Billy Jones up the middle. Kristen Jacobson hasn't touched the ball yet. He's another one of their big receivers, or running backs. He's 5'10". But Billy Jones doing most of the work on the ground now. Second down and three as we are at three minutes and five seconds to go first half. Vikings, best drive of the game so far. It started at their 15. It's going to be a handoff. I believe that was that Jones again. No, that was Jacobson finally. Yeah, that was Jacobson. There There he goes. As he was tripped up immediately and dropped, he got about a yard, yard and a half. So it's going to bring up third down. Problems on the snap, for, and he can't get away from the pressure. Jerry Atherton, Caleb Newton, and that's Cody Gray again on the stop. Just a problem on the snap. The timing was off there. And it's going to be a fourth down and about one for the Vikings. And now the referee will stop the clock for whatever reason. I guess just wants to make sure he didn't get the first down. They're not going to measure. He didn't get it. It's fourth down and one. They're going to line up to go for it with two minutes and 20 seconds to go. Dotson up under center. We've seen a quarterback keeper twice. He's going to hand it off right side. And he's going to pick up the first down as Gross got him up high around the neck and spun him down. Matt Kennedy also on the stop for SU, but he got the first down. He needed one. He got about three. And the running back got up limping a little bit when he came up off the turf. So first down and ten for the Vikings. Clock moving two minutes and ten seconds and counting here in the first half. Ball on the near hash mark. Receiver split to the near side. Their backs split behind Dotson. He'll drop back, looking left side open as the receiver caught at the 35. And a nice little move to the 29-yard line. Just got him between Avery and Matt Kennedy. The safety just got over there late. And I believe that was, was that Mitchell again? Preston Mitchell on a nice catch over his head. And it's first down and 10. And the Vikings... 
have it about the 29-yard line of South Umqua. Dotson, option, will hand it right side. Boy, big hole there. And across the 25 and down inside the 20. Big pickup of about nine. It's going to bring up second and short. Asaisla going without the huddle. They're going to try the same play, and that's going to be enough for a first down right at the 15. Clock will stop with 1.28 to go. Vikings have one timeout remaining. And now the Lancers will use their final time. Well, are they? they nope. said, uh, yeah, they said upstairs was a timeout, but they didn't show anything until just now. Yeah, there's a timeout now. Yeah, it looked like one of the coaches was heading out onto the field. Then he stopped and came back to the near sideline. And then finally the referee blew the whistle and said timeout South Umpqua. So they are out of timeouts. Ayusla still has one. A minute and 28 seconds to go here in the first half. South Umpqua 14. Sayusla nothing. This drive started all the way back at the 15-yard line, and they've had had a big fourth down and short at midfield, Ken, and the Vikings just pecking away here. I think they've been watching a lot of duck games when Chip Kelly was here because they are just going right up to the ball on a no huddle and trying to snap it within like 15, 20 seconds, trying to catch the uh, Salumqua defense off guard. And so far... Uh, kind of mixing up a little bit with Jacobson and then uh, then the quick throw out to Mitchell. Yeah, Dotson has done a nice job. They had a third down and long, and Dotson was able to scramble out of pressure, kept the play alive, and then found his target. On a third down and 10, he got 11. And then they picked up the first down a short time later on a fourth down and one from midfield. They've kept this drive going right now inside the 20-yard line. They're in the red zone. They're going to pitch it left side, trying to turn the corner. Can he get there? No. Good job. Great pursuit. That is Mr. Pence, number 56. That is Tanner Pence, 6'1", 180, a senior. And the clock moving. Vikings do have that one timeout remaining issue. They are out of timeouts. Dotson back split behind him. Takes the snap, and he's going to hand the football left side. Stood up, big pile of black jerseys. Atherton will pull him back. With help from his teammates, Pence in there as well. And the clock under one minute to go. Third down and long. They'll call it third down at about nine. little... Lining up on the wrong side. Now the tight end go to the right side. They're looking to throw the football across the middle. Open touchdown. Boy, he got between two defenders, Kramer and Kennedy. And a touchdown from about 14 yards out. Mitchell on the receiving end of the Vikings go 85 yards and cap it off with a 14-yard touchdown strike. It's 14-6. Yeah, they were... Moving the ball down the quick, down the field quickly, like we mentioned, you know, 15 to 20 seconds, they're ready to go. Now the extra point coming up, and they're going to kick it, it looks like. So the Vikings needed something to go their way in a gritty drive. Ran out almost the entire quarter. The kick is up, and it is good. Boy, that's old school, just straight on a couple of steps, and he boots it through. We'll take a quick timeout, 36.2 to go, 14-7, Lancers. For over 25 years, Clinton Wool Auto Group has worked to earn a name that means more than just another great deal. It's important to us that our name means the best in service, maintenance and repair, and customer satisfaction. We're also proud to be part of this great community by sponsoring and helping many of the events we all know and enjoy. It's our way of saying thanks to all of you who helped Clinton Newell Auto Group become Douglas County's number one dealer. Clinton Newell Auto Group. 
Group, where our name means more. Mmm, that coffee's good. It's so creamy. It's this new fat-free half and half from Umquad Dairy. Fat-free half and half? How's that even possible? I don't know. Magic cows? It says on the carton, Umquad Dairy's new fat-free half and half is made from real milk and is 100% oil-free, so magic cows. Huh, wonder what magic cows look like. Evidently fairly skinny. Well, that would explain the fat-free. Mm-hmm. I think I'll have another cup and extra half and half. Umquad Dairy's new fat-free half and half. It's made using local RBST-free magic cows. And it's not just for coffee. It's a great cream substitute in your favorite recipes. Look for it in your grocer's dairy case today. Brandon along with Ken Sherman. as Sayusla 85-yard touchdown drive. They've cut the lead in half. It's 14-7 Lancers. Short kick to Thompson near side at the 35. And he's going to get across the 40 to about the 45-yard line. And Lancers got a little time here, Ken. They've got... 32.1 32.1 seconds, but they are out of timeouts. Well, the way that running game's going, you know, you take a chance with the running game, try to get some down there, but like you said, they're out of timeouts, so it's probably going to get to be Eric Johnson to the air here to try to get a quick score in. Uh, do you have a field goal kicker? <laughs> well, Bueller's got a leg, but he's not that accurate, but he's... Trips this side. Looks like they may be going to the air to try to find yep, some. Here we Dallas go. Five around. receivers. Three receivers to the right side. Two receivers to the short side of the field. Johnston, empty backfield. Everyone said, here we go. First down and 10 from the 45. Looking across the middle. Throws for Thompson. Caught it. Gain of about eight. Hit and dropped. They'll put it down at the 48-yard line. Second down and seven. The problem is the clock is moving. And it's moving quickly. Tristan Gross checks into the game. Oh, excuse me, that's Merritt. It's put to the right side. 13 seconds. Johnston takes the snap. Looking deep right side. Lobbing it up for Rigsby near the 30. He caught it up to 25, 20, and falls down. As Johnson will hurry down. The tree. He'll probably try to spike the football. Only 5.5 seconds to go. First down and 10 from the 20-yard line. Johnson... Brings the offense up. He's up under center. They'll wind the clock. There we go. Johnson takes the snap and throws it down. The clock will stop with 3.8 seconds. And like you said, are they going to try a 38-yard field goal or are they going to go for the end zone? Well, that was a great play out there to Sean Rigsby. And I didn't know for sure if he rolled out of bounds or not. And now here comes the big boys in. Yeah, it looks like they're going to try the extra or the field goal. It's number 68. That is their kicker, Josh Bueller, the six foot, 200 pound sophomore. He's got plenty of leg, but sometimes it goes 20 yards, sometimes it goes 50. But we'll figure it out here. And now a flag down. And a delay of game. Ouch. Boy, that's going to march him back five yards. Still going to try it, huh? <laughs> <laughs> They're going to put the ball down at the... Boy, is that the 33? It's going to be a 43-yard field goal attempt. Here we go. The snap, the placement down. Bueller gets it, a leg into it, but it's not going to be enough. It's a line drive, and it's going to be short. And it's no good with 1.3 seconds to go. And now the Lancers will head out on the field, their defense, for at least one play. And we'll see if the Vikings will just take an knee or see if they can get something, maybe a defensive penalty here to keep the quarter going most likely just take a knee here not much time 1.3 seconds and I think that's what they're going to do yep sayusla has got the back all the way around the five yard line so they're just going to go to a knee and that's going to be the final play of this first half a good ball game Lancers jumped out to a 14-0 lead. The Vikings were able to go 85 yards of the last possession of this on the prior possession. And they were able to punch it in on a 14-yard touchdown strike. 
and they've cut the lead to 14-7. to That's where we're at at halftime. The halftime show coming up next here on Douglas County Sports Online. Dot com. Just like the team that lines up and runs the ball up the middle, Shop Smart doesn't rely on fancy gimmicks or trick plays. All you'll find at your neighborhood Shop Smart are direct deals for the best prices on the products you need most. Need a first down on third and one? Full back up the middle. <laughs> Prices on groceries that won't break the family bank? Head to ShopSmart. Proud to support today's local football. ShopSmart, where savings are in the bag. Did you know Dutch Bros Coffee roasts all of their own coffee fresh every day? We have individual relationships with the farmers that harvest our coffee to ensure that there's no compromise in any step of the process. From the farmer to the cup, we guarantee satisfaction. It says so at the bottom of every cup. Drive through one of our convenient locations today and put our world-renowned speed, award-winning service, and unprecedented quality to the test. All of our locations are locally owned and operated to strengthen community involvement. Visit www.dutchbros.com today. Hear what one of Avista's customers has to say about energy efficiency. I'm John, and my wife, Roberta, and I bought this house about 10 years ago. This is an older home, and we decided to work with it to increase efficiency when we could. We've changed some appliances and worked with our utility company to get some rebates. I think we believe firmly that enough people in town making small choices adds up to a big collective impact. Join the effort and start saving today. Download rebate forms at everylittlebit.com. They call, send letters, email, and visit your home. They're not friends or family. They're con artists, scammers, and criminals. In times like these, it's important to learn how to protect yourself. Credit card schemes, bogus investment opportunities, and free vacation scams are just a few ways that today's criminals target you and your family. Protect yourself. Never give anyone your social security number, credit card, or bank account information unless you initiated the call. Stay informed of current scams by contacting your Attorney General's office and Better Business Bureau. If you're a victim, reporting the con to the local authorities will prevent others from suffering the same fate. To learn more about how to keep your family safe from con artists and scams, visit ncpc.org. That's ncpc.org. A message from the U.S. Department of Justice, National Crime Prevention Council, and the Ad Council. And welcome back to Frosty Lowry Field in Tri-City. Brent Newton along with Ken Sherman. We are at halftime, and our score is South Umpqua 14, Sayus Law 7, the Far West League opener for both these clubs. The Lancers jumped out to a 7-0 lead after the opening quarter. They stretched it out to 14-0, but the Vikings added a score late. And it's a seven-point contest here at the break. First half scoring summary, Cameron Everett, a five-yard touchdown reception from quarterback Eric Johnson. The Bueller kick was good. It was 7 nothing, and that was our only score of that opening quarter. In the second period, Matt Kennedy capped off a long drive for the three-yard touchdown run. The Bueller kick made it 14 nothing, but the Vikings were able to answer a 14-yard touchdown strike from Dotson to Mitchell. The kick by Thrall made it 14-7, and that is it. 14-7 our score at the break, and Ken, both teams right now just doing it on the ground. Yeah, that's what, and they've got the they got the talent on both sides of the field where they can just run the clock out. Kristen Jacobson, uh, Dotson, that quarterback, everything goes around him, and then you got little Billy Jones as well. Uh, you throw in uh, Kenneth Thrall once in a while, and they got a they got a lot of speed on that Sayuslaw team with all those returners coming back. But I'm really impressed with the ground game for the Lancers right now. You got the one-two punch, you know, uh, in there in the backfield, and and. Uh, and Johnson goes out, throws throws a, a flare out to the to the receiver is incomplete, but since then he's three for three. So, you know, and that that long pass to Sean Rigsby helps him out. Um, so right now uh, you've got that 14-7 lead. You jumped it out to the 14-0 lead. 
uh, your ground game's working. You know, come back in the second half, see if you can keep that ground game going, and then kind of throw in a little pass once in a while, maybe uh, maybe a bootleg for Johnson or maybe just a running play for Johnson because he's got the speed to do it. And uh, keep the ball in your possession. It's keep that their offense off the field. That's a big thing. Yeah, one thing that's that – it makes you feel pretty good. The the Lancers have been able to do on the ground. They've got the size of that offensive line, and you think that eventually that might wear down the Vikings. As this game goes along, they could wear down the Vikings late to where, you know, SU may be able just to just keep pounding at them, and then eventually the Vikings, who are not big at all, and uh, maybe SU could just keep doing that and eventually just wear them down and just – you know, keep keep it on the ground for four quarters. I, there's really no reason to put it in the air with the success they've had. And as you uh, as you watch the game, and as Brent and I, Brent was talking about a few minutes ago uh, during the broadcast, there's a a lot of miscommunication on the Sayuslaw team early in this game. There, you know, a couple of handoffs he had to reach out to get. He almost almost lost one uh, earlier. So uh, there's you know, second half is going to be the difference right now with, with a great ball game going right now. Uh, and, a, and a team that used to be in the far west, now the Sutherland Bulldogs, now a member of the Sky M. And so far, not doing real good right now for the Bulldogs as they are down to Sisters midway second quarter, 21-7. So the Bulldogs struggling in their opener, the Sky M League opener with and Sisters. And Roseburg and Willamette had no scores last time we checked. And no score from Roseburg and Willamette. And Roseburg really needs a, a win really bad right now too as well. Yeah, two other Far West League games tonight. Uh, Douglas, who's winless on this season, they've got to start out at Yee. North Bend. That's not going to be fun. And they're 0-3 North Bend, 3-0 and in the non-league this season. And then Marshfield, kind of a, a, a oddity. I don't know how good or how bad they really are. They're 2-1, and but their loss coming to Sutherland, and, and Sutherland just rolled over them. But Marshfield starting at Brookings Harbor, and as Coach Stebbins said during the pregame, that was a team he thought would be better, but Brookings comes in at 0-3. Yeah, Marshfield, um, Marshfield, they beat Cottage Grove for the first time in like 10 years or something, and they were so fired up that they that they beat Cottage Grove. I think they may have been overlooking Sutherland a little bit, and then with Raymond Henderson on the ground with 153 yards and and uh, some good plays from Sutherland, um, they surprised Marshfield, and and uh, I think Marshfield it, they have a lot of speed, they have a lot of uh, size, they have a lot of kids coming back, so I think they're going to be uh, I think they'll be a pretty good ball club once you get into the far west. But um, Douglas is having some issues; they're really really young right now. Um, and North Bend, what can you say about North Bend? I mean, you know, you got that that if you've never been to North Bend to, to watch a football game, you need to go because it is really impressive over there on the, on the coast. Yeah, it's when well, they have a, a mini tron <laughs> the screen, that video screen. Yeah, they got like ten you, guys that yeah. sit inside this little room, and you're sitting next to them calling the game, and they're pushing buttons, and you got all. I mean, it looks like a college atmosphere. It's got the signs up there that say noise, and the signs up there that say fourth down, and you know, it's really cool. Uh, Sio was a really cool place to go because they do the chainsaw thing and the and the beaver fight song and all kinds of stuff. So when you go to some of these schools, it's it'll be it'll be fun. Yeah, the Lancers will will uh, next week travel to Brookings Harbor, and then they will hit the road for North Bend, the place you just talked about. And then, believe it or not, they'll finish out the season here with back-to-back home games against uh, Marshfield and then Douglas. So it's amazing to think. It felt like this feels like the season just got underway, but there's only really five weeks tonight and four more weeks of the regular season left. And then, of course, there's that play-in round, and then. Yeah. In the postseason, but the Lancers, there's plenty to go here. Still only halfway through this Far West League opener, 14-7. South Umpqua with the seven-point advantage over the Vikings. We're going to take a quick timeout, and we'll come back with more of the halftime show here on Douglas County Sports Online. Com. When it's time to huddle up the team for a family meal, make sure your game plan includes a trip to Ray's Food Place. Your home team needs a hometown store, and that's how Ray's got started in 1956. A good home team needs the perfect combination of offense, defense, and special teams. And Ray's Food Place scores best with great pricing, quality products, and friendly service. Ray's is proud to sponsor today's local football action. Ray's Food Place. Family-owned, family values, since 1956. Are your eyes good enough to tell apples from oranges? Then you should be able to see the value of taking your eyes to advanced eye care in Myrtle Creek. 
A common misconception is that you can go to a department store or box store, take care of all your vision needs, and save money. In most cases, that store can't address the same medical issues as doctors Goodwin and Kelly can. You see, Advanced Eye Care utilizes the latest technological innovations and diagnostic equipment. While checking your vision, they may detect yet undiagnosed problems like high blood pressure, diabetes, even a brain tumor. Advanced Eye Care also has eyewear for every budget, from very affordable package plans to premium lenses and designer frames. They even have 0% financing for 6 to 12 months depending on your budget. Remember, these are your eyes we're talking about. Do you really want a department store or box store working on them? Apples and oranges, don't lose sight of what's best for you and your family. Get superb value and professional patient care at Advanced Eye Care. Offering a lifetime commitment to your vision health in Myrtle Creek on Main next to Soco Coffee. The Internet is a wonderful resource for kids. But in times like these, the Internet can also increase your child's risk of being a victim of crime. Instruct your child to never give out personal information, like their name, address, or school name without your approval. Teach them about frauds and scams that often appear as friendly emails or offers that are too good to be true. Place your computer where you can see what your child is doing. Use software that prevents access to inappropriate sites and chat rooms. Teach your child what to do if they come across such sites or receive solicitations from strangers. Learn how they're using the Internet and how much time they're spending on it. Let's keep our kids as safe in the cyber world as we try to do in the real one. Visit ncpc.org to learn more about how we can protect our children. That's ncpc.org. A message from the U.S. Department of Justice, National Crime Prevention Council, and the Ad Council. To recognize the achievements of every student, that's the mission of the South Umpqua High School Booster Club. Each year, the boosters bring awareness to the community about student achievements. Get involved. Visit a booster club meeting on the second Monday of the month at the district office starting at 6.30 in the evening. South Umpqua High hosts 13 sporting activities from the fall through spring sessions. Contact Lisa Lemming at 580-8405. Support your community. Support South Umpqua Booster Club. And welcome back to Frosty Lowry Field, the halftime show here in Tri-City. It's 14-7, to South Umpqua with the lead. Jumped out to 14 nothing advantage. The Vikings showing their resolve with everything going the Lancers' way. They marched down 85 yards and able to punch it in with less than a minute to go in that first half to cut the lead in half. It's 14-7. South Umpqua with the lead. The Vikings, though, will get the football first in the second half. We're going to take a quick timeout. When we come back, I'll let you listen to the pregame interview I did with Steve Stebbins. Um, and we'll take a quick timeout and come back with that on Douglas County Sports Online. Com. From the vantage point, Mafatu saw six war canoes drawn up on the beach. But what held the boys' eyes in awful trance were the figures, the eaters of men, cannibals. Mafatu watched the strange scene, powerless to move. In that very instant, he heard a crashing in the undergrowth. Four figures were tearing through the jungle. He turned and ran blindly down the trail, thinking only of his canoe. If only he could reach it before the savages overtook him. Explore new worlds. Find out what happens next by reading the book Call It Courage by Armstrong Sperry. For other great book ideas, visit literacy.gov. A message from the Library of Congress and the Ad Council. Dell's Building Supply has been an active member of the Myrtle Creek Tri-City community for more than 50 years. Dell's is also proud to sponsor its local students and a variety of school programs, including South Umpqua High School Athletics. 
Owner Jeff Johnson and his staff wish all answered team success this season. Dell's Building Supply, 102 South Old Pacific Highway in Myrtle Creek. Go Lancers! Kids who play sports are healthier than those who don't. They learn discipline, teamwork, and life habits that promote achievement. Kids in sports form strong social skills, develop confidence, enjoy a high standard of mental health, and often become solid building blocks of the community. As the local teams play out this season, they'll learn about a lot more than competing in games. They'll learn life lessons that can be gained nowhere else. That's why Clint Newell Auto Group supports local youth athletics. Coach, uh, your team coming off an exciting come-from-behind win last Friday at Banks. Yeah, exciting was true. We uh, we played great defense for four quarters, outstanding defense. Really proud of our defense. And we kind of stunk up the board offensively for three and a half quarters and put two drives together to pull out a victory. It was good for our kids uh, to stay after and play a tough game where we shot ourselves in the foot the whole game with penalties and mistakes and, and still come out with a victory. So it was good for our, it was a good experience for our kids and and learning how to play on a long road trip because we've got a long road trip to Brookings next week. So that was, that was another reason we scheduled the game. Now, offensively, a lot of teams uh, expect a lot from SU. We've got some talent offensively last year and then this year as well. But it's been a little bit slow. Uh, are you a little concerned at where the offense is at this point of the season? Uh, I'm not concerned. We're, we're a different team than we were last year. Last year, you got to remember, we had three guys in Dakota and Christian and Marcus who were kind of explosion type of players who at any moment could take any play and take it to the house. Where this year, we, we're not, we don't have the team speed we had last year. We're a little bit more methodical, three, four, five yards at a time. We've we got to grind it down the field. That's just, that's just the makeup of our team. And, I mean, that's how we are, and there's nothing much we can do about it other than five yards at a time and, keep, and, and get ready for the next play. Now your team is two and one after three games of the season. Uh, when the uh, first practice started, where did you think you would be at this point? Well, it's funny because a couple of our coaches came in and who work outside the, the school, and and people saw our non-league schedule, and, and both those coaches were told, "Well, you guys are going to start at 0 and three." Uh, and uh, you know, I was hoping we'd be two and one at the worst. Two and one. I thought I thought we could beat Hidden Valley, and I thought we'd get one of those two. We should have gotten all three. We should be three and zero. But I'm happy with where we're at. We've learned a lot. We've grown. And, uh, and we've got a lot of experience those three games to come into this, this first league game. Now, it is your first league game. You're taking on the Sayuslaw Slav Vikings. Tell us a little bit about your opponent. <laughs> well, first off, South Lanco hasn't beaten Sayuslaw in 13 years. So we've we got we to gotta get past that one. Uh, you'll watch them. They're, they're, they don't do a lot. They're very simple. But what they do, they're very disciplined and do it very well. And they have a, they're faster than us which we've seen already this year. But uh, they have really good skill kids. Uh, the running back, Billy Jones, their quarterback, Dotson, and their two outside receivers run well. So it's, it's going to be a chore for us tonight. It'll be interesting. Now, will you try anything differently? Will we see anything differently uh, offensively or defensively uh, to combat that speed? We might because they're their they're, they're base bread and butter offensive plays is the veer option. So we might jump into a little 50 look defensively just to give them a different look than what they've seen on film from us offensively. Hey, we're going to be the same. We're going to we're going to pound it and see what we can do. And how's healthy your club coming into this one? We're pretty healthy. We had some guys banged up last week, but I think we've got pretty much everyone healthy this week. I feel good coming to this. We got a little, we still got some sickness running through the team like we did last week, but we're healthier than we were last week, so I feel good about that. And finally, coach, uh, Far West Lake season obviously kicking off. Everyone's played three games. Uh, has it kind of panned out what you've seen so far with the other five teams in the Far West League? Uh, yes and no. I mean, I, we expected North Bend to be really good, and we expect Sayusla to be really good. And, and uh, I knew Douglas was going to be young, but I, I thought they'd be better than the, record-wise than they are right now. Um, Brookings is the one that kind of shocked me. We saw them at the Jamboree, and I thought they'd be off to a better start than they are right now. But, it, it, I mean, there's a couple shocks, but then there's a couple predictables. So, <laughs> yeah, it is what it is. We'll find out in the next five weeks how good everyone is. Yeah, that is true. And you were able to stop the streak last year with getting that first Far West League win. Hopefully you can do, uh, stop another streak tonight. Best of luck. Thank you. Head coach Steve Stebbins. Pre-game. Just like the team that lines up and runs the ball up the middle. 
Shop Smart doesn't rely on fancy gimmicks or trick plays. All you'll find at your neighborhood Shop Smart are direct deals for the best prices on the products you need most. Need a first down on third and one? Pull back up the middle. Need prices on groceries that won't break the family bank? Head to Shop Smart. Proud to support today's local football. Shop Smart. Where savings are in the bag. Did you know Dutch Bros Coffee roasts all of their own coffee fresh every day? We have individual relationships with the farmers that harvest our coffee to ensure that there's no compromise in any step of the process. From the farmer to the cup, we guarantee satisfaction. It says so at the bottom of every cup. Drive through one of our convenient locations today and put our world-renowned speed, award-winning service, and unprecedented quality to the test. All of our locations are locally owned and operated to strengthen community involvement. Visit www.dutchbros.com today. And welcome back to Frosty Lowry Field in Tri-City. Brent Newton along with Kenny Sherman. And we're ready to go here in the third quarter. The Lancers leading at 14-7. to Ken, before we get going, you got a couple scores to pass along. We do. At halftime right now, uh, former Far West plays Sutherland. Sutherland uh, at the half down to Sisters 21 to 13. And Roseburg at the half over Willamette 13 nothing. They needed a big win. And one final we got in today from eight man football Days Creek 32 and Elkton 12. That's right. Head coach David Hunt in his first season there in Days Creek sending me that score. He's done a nice job so far and we're going to have the Wolves and the Hornets next Saturday. That'll be a big game at Canvas Valley. Come on out if you never got a, if you never had a chance to see eight man football. It's up and down, up and down. It'll be fun. That'll be at Canvas Valley at one o'clock next Saturday. We'll have it for you. That'll be a lot of fun next week as Dace Creek going in unbeaten. Canvas Valley looking for their first win tonight at Glendale. So Sayusl will get it first. They'll get a 15 yard line right up the gut, 20, 25, and taken down at about the 29 yard line. On the stop, Kyler Merritt for the Lancers. And SU will be on defense first here. The Vikings, the last possession, marched 85 yards and got into the end zone. They've got the ball back here to start this third quarter. 14-7. Joseph Dotson, senior signal caller, brings the offense up. Back split behind him. To the near side, I believe that's Preston Mitchell. Straight drop, looking to throw, lobbing it near side. Avery falls down, diving for it, incomplete. Good effort from Mitchell. Avery had pretty good coverage, but he just stumbled. Yeah, if that would have been on target, he would have been gone. Well, it was one, one Lancer back there. That was Matt Kennedy. But uh, Avery f- fell down on the on the on just a little log blast path going down the sidelines, and Avery fell down. Yeah, a little timing pattern, and just overthrew it by about a yard and a half. There, here we go. Uh, well, he's going to hand it first back through, and there's not going to be much there. Mason Ronan on the stop, also there, number 56, Tanner Pence, and it's going to bring up a third down and a whole bunch. First down marker is right at the 40-yard line. So this will bring up a, looks like about a third down. Hey, that's about third and nine. Only give him about a yard with that spot. Third down and nine. The Lancers would love to get a three and out and get the football back here to start this third quarter. 11-15 and counting. Mitchell comes to the near side. Jacobson and Jones split behind Dotson. He's going to throw the football. No pressure. Looking right. Throws. It's caught but dropped immediately short of the first down marker. That is Buchanan. Thomas Buchanan. Six foot, 165 pound senior lineman. And it's fourth down and short. Well, now it's fourth and about three and a half. And they're going to have to pump the football. Yeah, Gordon didn't set up at the uh, at the pin like the coach probably wanted him to on that first down marker, and he came up short. Thrall in to punt the football. Takes the snap and high kick. Avery bobbled it, went down to a knee. Well, he got up. And I guess he picked the ball up and wasn't down, so they're going to let him run back. 30, 35, and nice crud broke a tackle and gets to the 39. He went down kind of to one knee, but the ball went, he, he went down to a knee when he 
initially tried to catch it. He fumbled it, and then he got up and then picked up the loose football. So he was able to advance it to the 39-yard line. Pretty good starting field position. Eric Johnson jogs on to the football field for South Umpqua. Want to thank our newest sponsors this season, attorney at law Christopher Peterman. Thank you to Chris Peterman. Also, Fry's Auto Body and the Myrtle Creek Fire Department. And Chief Brandon Everett. Thank you to all three of our newest sponsors for SU football. You hand the football to Kennedy, who jumps over his own lineman. That's, I believe, Ronan. And he's going to pick up a couple of yards to bring up second down and long. Fry's Auto Body. Thank you to Kenny Sherman. Yeah, I do all the body work over there. Well, you know the, you know the owner. <laughs> Ed's a good guy. They uh, they do some great work over What's there. What's Ed's last name? Ed Fry. <laughs> That's, That's right. right. <laughs> Fry's Auto Body. So thank you to Ed Fry and company. Newest sponsors this season. In our sixth year of broadcasting Lancers Athletics. Second down, call it seven. Johnson looking to throw plenty of time. Going to go deep down the middle for Rigsby. Around the 25, lobs it up, and it's knocked down. Good coverage back there for South Umpqua. Scott Gordon on the coverage, and it's third down. Sean Rigsby, the only the only player out here with the, with the Lancers that has the visor. He's got the visor on the on the helmet. Rigsby's been their main receiving weapon through the first three plus games of this season. He had a big catch late in that first half. A drive that ended in a missed field goal. Looking across the middle, he overthrew Thompson, who's right at the first down marker, and it's going to be intercepted at the 40. Thompson was open at the 50, overshot it, and the free safety was just waiting for it back there, and he just threw it right to him. He went down to both knees and caught the uh, intercepted the pass, and he was down right there. He was on his knees when he caught it, and that turnover gives it right back to the Vikings. He had him, though, for the first down as Nathan Thompson was open right at the first down marker, but he overshot him by 10 yards, and the Vikings quickly bring the offense up. They've got it back. Momentum on the side of the team from Florence. It's a reverse. They'll pitch it. 35-40. Gets around the corner. First down. 40. Turns on the Jets. 30. Cuts it inside. 25. And finally taken down by Cody Gray. They'll put it down about the 28-yard line. Not sure if that was Mitchell or not. It was coming in motion. Fake the handoff, and then the receiver coming in motion was coming towards the quarterback, and he just pitched it to him. And the misdirection caught SU off guard, and the Vikings have it. They're going to hand it off. First back throw, big hole, first down inside the 15, and dropped at the 13-yard line. And the Vikings, everything going right now, Ken. Yeah, that was... uh... Kristen Jacobson again, who's all of a sudden at, at the end of the first half being the workhorse and here in this quarter uh, running the ball hard. He didn't touch it early on, but he's getting some work here now, and it's paying off for the Vikings trying to tie this one up. Lobbing it, dots and double coverage near side, incomplete. Working on Avery also there. It looks like Kramer coming over to help out from his safety position. Like Avery might have grabbed the receiver a little bit, but got away with it. Second down and 10 from about the, I guess we'll say the 14. So first down about the four-yard line. So I used to like, can pick up a first down without scoring. Second down and 10 from the 14. Up under center, Dotson back split behind him. Try the option. He's going to pitch it. Near side, gets around the corner inside the 10 and drop Ronan tripped him up and then Buchanan finished him off with help from Eric Kramer and it's going to bring up third down from about the eight yard line so call it third down and four for Sayusla Jacobson and Jones split behind Dotson Mitchell to the near side Gordon wide to the right Dotson 
will hand the ball first back through. Gets inside the five, and I think he's going to have the first down. He's going to be awfully close. And now they're going to stop the clock. I thought I saw a flag come in, but I'm not sure. There was something f- flew up in the air in the, in, behind the SU defense, and I thought there was a flag coming in, but maybe not. I don't believe there is now. The referee's oh, okay. just going to look over at the marker, and he's going to say first down. They're not even going to measure. So it's first down and goal from the four. He needed to get to the four for the first down. That's where he got first down and goal from the four. Backs again, split behind Dotson. They're set, takes a snap. He'll hand it right side and just walking into the end zone. And the Lancers, their lead is down to one. Yeah, Billy Jones found a big hole and scatters right through. And with 8.15 left, we're one kick away from tying this ball game up. That was Jones. Folks, the reason I don't say the name of the Sayusla offensive player too often, I can't see the yeah, numbers. No. The uh-uh. white jerseys with those yellow numerals. Trying to tie it up here. High snap, placement down, throws kick high enough. Boy, boots it through. and We're tied, 8.15 to go. We're tied up at 14. You're listening to Lancers Football on DouglasCountySportsOnline.com. Hey, Mom, I have something you should meet. Something or someone? Something. It's my perfect food. It's your what? It's my perfect food. Not only does it taste great, it's packed with protein and calcium. It's my perfect healthy snack. Plus, it's made locally with RBST hormone-free milk, fresh from Oregon Dairy Farms. Okay, I'll bite. What's the name of your perfect food? It's my cottage cheese, from Umpqua Dairy, of course. Umpqua Dairy, mom, daughter, and quality checked approved since 1931. You see their trucks along highway construction sites and rolling to jobs throughout the community. Knife River Materials. The name is synonymous with high-quality products and great service. And you can have that solid Knife River experience at your home or office as well. Knife River products and materials are created right here and are rigorously tested before being applied. If you're putting in a pool, sidewalk, or driveway, tell your contractor to use Knife River Materials because you deserve the best. Knife River. They've been serving Douglas County for over 50 years. Brent Newton along with Ken Sherman as we are tied up at 14. The Lancers will get it back. Thrall tees it up at the 40-yard line. Back deep to receive Rigsby and Avery. It's going to be a short kick. And it's going to hit at the 40 and go straight out of bounds on the Vikings side. The penalty flag will come in. And the Lancers will start in with good field position. 8.15 to go, third quarter. 14-14, a four-yard touchdown run from Jones. The Thrall extra point. And we are all tied at 14. It was 14-0 South Umpqua. Late in that second quarter, the Vikings able to score less than a minute to go to get within seven. And here, after the interception, able to march down the field and cap it off with a three or a four-yard touchdown run from Jones. And we're all knotted at 14. Eric Johnson. Now Kelly lined up to his right. Merritt behind him. Rigsby to the near side. They'll hand it to Merritt. He'll follow the block of Kelly. Can he turn the corner? Yes, he does. Across midfield, 45 and taken down. Inside the 40-yard line. As diving for his feet was number eight. That's another nice play by Preston Mitchell on defense this time. Yeah, that was Mitchell. Sorry. Sorry, Kenny. Oh, you're good. I think that was the 50-50 winner wanting me to give her some money, but I don't have any. Yeah. (laughs) She's got to go up top into the press box. Got to go work for it. Johnson will hand it to Merritt, who slips a little bit. Kind of the timing was off on that, but Merritt able to jump over a defender across the 40 and get to the 36-yard line. So it's second down at about seven. First down around the... 29 yard line so first down or excuse me second down and seven here at frosty lowry field there's a a bunker we call it and that's where we're located and then there's a ladder to my right you go up that and then up into the press box above us and that's where the coaches are for both teams and also the 
scoreboard operator and the Oops. public address announcer. And it happens every time when they announce that 50-50 winner. The winner comes in here and <laughs> yep. gives me your ticket. I should take it and tell her I'll give it back to her at the end of the game. Yeah, we'll get you the money later, yeah. <laughs> Meet us at Abby's. <laughs> and we'll just go collect that money. Here she comes. She went up the ladder poor. She comes down wealthy. What did you get? She made it. Our 50-50 winner. They're going to hand the ball to Merritt again right side. He's going to be spun down after a short gain. And now a late penalty flag comes in. And some jawing and pushing and shoving going on. The Lancers think it's going to be on the Vikings, but the officials haven't signaled anything. Four of the five officials are talking it over. Now the white hat will look our way. And it's going to be a personal foul against Sayusla. And that's going to be an automatic first down. What happened is after the tackle, it was Kenneth Thrall on the tackle, and then number 54, uh, Markel Bliss, uh, came in and kind of shoved the, the the runner after he was on the ground. A little, little extra activity down on the pile, and, and the officials caught him. That'll move the ball down to the 22-yard line. First down and 10, Eric Johnson. Single setback is Merritt. They will keep it on the ground with Kyder. Left side, stutter steps, got through a hole inside the 20, inside the 15. Nice move. And a nice run by Kyler Merritt. It's going to bring up second and short. And this is what you need, just like the first half. Just take your time, run the football. Your uh, your ground game is still working on it, so keep it rolling. Take your time. Eat some time off the clock. Tied at 14. 6.25 and counting here. Third quarter. Reed split to the left side. Sean, Sean Rigsby to the near side. Merritt the single setback. Johnson. From the shotgun. Second down, call it two. Johnson will hand it to Merritt. He'll try the right side, hit in the backfield. Gets away from the first defender, but drop there. Three white jerseys leading the charge. Number 54, Markel Bliss, the man you just mentioned. And it's going to bring up third down. Boy, it's a loss of a couple, third and four. Maverick Mitchell also in there on the stop. He had an interception uh, in the game last week. It's funny because both of these teams put up 40 points against Hidden Valley. And right now, we're in a tussle right now at a 14-14 tie after Sal Lumpwa jumped out to a 14-0 lead. Now threatening here to take the lead again. Kelly lined up to Johnson's right. Merritt behind him. And a fake the handoff. Pressure Johnson getting chased. Trying to run out of the pocket. Four white jerseys chasing him. Gets to the corner. First down. Johnson just outran the Viking defense. That's how you get it. You had three guys coming at you. You just run as fast as you can to the left side. You go down to, to the sideline. You look for the marker. You step out right there at the marker. You got a first down and in the red zone. You know, now I look at it. They're going to mark him shy, it looks like. I can see the down marker. They put fourth down on it. Looks like less than a yard. So he must not have gotten. It's on the far side of the field. We're on the SU side. Under the covered grandstand, it's the far side of the field, so they're going to say fourth and short. SU will obviously go for it. Johnson quickly gets the snap, hands it to Merritt, hit at the line, but he lunges forward. First down, Lancers. Out of the shotgun on a fourth and less than a yard. They, and Merritt just takes it, and uh, a big pile right there at the, at, the, at the bottom. Now they're going to sort it all out. And they haven't moved the sticks yet. Eric Johnson. There it is. Yeah, Eric Johnson was signaling with his left hand saying first down, and he was right. The official agreed with him. First down and 10, so the Lancers didn't do anything fancy. They, the Vikings knew what was coming at them, and they were unable to stop it, so the Lancers moved the chains. 5-23 and counting here in the third quarter. South Umqua 14, Sayusla 14. Lancers trying to get back in the lead. There's that formation we hadn't seen all season long until now. Thompson on the right side of Johnson. 
Pinch to his left. They'll hand it to Merritt. He'll go left side, get around the corner, turn it back inside, inside the 15, inside the 10. On the far side of the field, good pickup. Looks like the first down marker is about, what is it, about the one-yard line? Looks like it, yeah. Yeah, it's really hard to tell, folks. We're not very high up, so we'll, we'll call it, what, about second down and maybe six. They'll hand it Merritt right side. He stood up, and he just lunges forward inside the five to about the four. He's going to bring up third and short. As the clock moves, 420 and counting here in quarter number three. Sayusla 14, South Umqua 14. Tire offense staring over the near sideline. Steve Stebbins running through the plays. Got the big boys in there. Pence wearing number 56. He's lined up to Johnston's left. Thompson to his right. Merritt. Directly behind Eric Johnson from the shotgun. Third and short. Fakes the handoff. Looking across the middle. And he overshot Everett, who had a touchdown reception in the first quarter. And it's fourth down. And about three. They can pick up a first down right about the one. It's fourth and short. And it looks like they'll go for it. No Josh Bueller. He's standing on the near side. So they're going to go for it. Fourth down and short. Rigsby and Thompson lined up to the right side. Josh Reed wide left along with Everett. Now Merritt joins him. Trips left. Empty backfield. Kennedy from the shotgun. Fourth down and three. They're going to look across the middle. Caught. Thompson. Goal line. Touchdown. Lancers. And Thompson, that last play, was wide open on the right side, and he threw his hands in the air because they didn't find him. It's a score here. Unfortunately, the band, or a majority of them, are out eating some fried bread, I think. Yeah, (laughs) Got the drummer and about one trombone player. Good snap, placement down, the kick is high enough, it's long enough, and it's good. Snuck it inside the left cross, or the left goal post. 3.43 to go, Lancers back on top. What's better than a touchdown for your favorite team? Getting a great deal on groceries at your neighborhood Ray's Food Place. Ray's Food Place is your home team with fresh produce, the highest quality meats, tasty bakery items, and everything you need to game plan a party, a tailgater, or just a quick weeknight meal. Ray's is proud to sponsor today's local football action because you support us every day. Ray's Food Place, family owned, family values since 1956. Noon along with Ken Sherman here in Tri City. The Lancers back on top. Nice drive, capped it off. Four yard touchdown pass from Johnson to Thompson, Nathan Thompson. And it's a 21 14 lead. Short kick taken at the 20. Sayusla will return 25 to the middle of the field, 30, and stood up and driven back. And that is Mr. Thomas Buchanan. He's a tough kid. Played as a freshman late in some games with former coach Kevin Hubbard. Then he did not play his sophomore and junior year. And that kid can hit some people. He's actually a good football player. (laughs) 
Mike Lemming giving me some score updates. I'll give them to you in a minute. Mike Lemming, the stepfather of quarterback Eric Johnson. Oh, Sayus Lott back on offense. And they're going to hand the football first back through and is stood up after a short gain and driven back. Three black jerseys there. Cody Gray and Matt Kennedy get off the bottom of the pile. But they'll give the running back forward progress to about the 38-yard line. It's a pickup of about four, and it's second down and six. Dotson Boy quickly up under center. Trying to keep this SU defense off balance, and I think they changed up the cadence a little bit. I think Dotson might have got the front four there of the Lancers to jump offside. Marshfield leading Brookings Harbor 19 to nothing. That game just underway in the second half. And North Bend over Douglas at the break. 49 to nothing. Wow. We were talking about the Trojans at halftime. They are so young. Tough to see after all the success that Joe Polamalu had yeah. for all those years. And now Barrett Smith had a pretty good season last year in his first year, but just not a lot coming back this year. Handoff left side, breaks the tackle, gets the first down across midfield to SU territory to the 45-yard line. And that little quick hitter is starting to bother the Lancers now. It's just an option, the first, the first back through. And you can either pull it out of his chest and then try the option around the corner, the quarterback can either pitch it or keep it. But it seems like that first back three is just giving it to him, and they're finding lots of green grass in front of him. Dotson will fake the handoff, throw across the middle. It's caught and dropped immediately. Big hit by Matt Kennedy, but still plenty of yards there. I think he got 12 first and 10, moved the chains. Ball placed at the 33-yard line, and the Vikings moving. Kristen Jacobson off the field. He had something going on with his shoes, so he had to go off the field real quick. So Jones now in thrall in the backfield. Dotson has got the offense working now. Try the left side, and it's going to be a short pick up there. That is Jacobson. Atherton on the stop along with Pence. Caleb Newton will check out of the game. Mason Ronan will come back in. Nearing the two-minute mark, third quarter, South Umpqua 21, Sayusla 14, but the Vikings on the move. They have it second down and about six deep inside SU territory. Looking to throw. The ball's knocked down. Nathan Thompson got up in the air, got those big paws on and almost intercepted that one. His almost grabbed it out of the air. It's third down. Knocked it down just right. A big third down play coming up here. A big stop here for the defense and you know and they're pretty much in four down territory now but looks like Sayusla wanting to throw the ball a little bit here now. Dotson back split behind him. He's got two receivers to his right side. They're going to hand the football. He's going to pull it out of the chest. He'll keep it himself. He fumbled the football. It's on the turf. And it's going to be recovered by Jones and Sayusla. But the ball went back a couple of yards. Dotson, that was just not a smart move. He got hit. He was short of the first down. He just tried to pitch it, but just lost control of it. And the ball is back now outside the 30, about the 31-yard line. It's going to be fourth down and a whole bunch. They're going to go for it. They're going to, rolling out his dots. He's going to be hit, dropped. SU will get it over on downs. Nathan Thompson on the stop. Well, you look at that option that they run, and it's right across the line. They're trying to trying to uh, keep it at, hidden, but... Uh, the Lancer defense on the play before this one uh, just sent, it, sent everybody coming up, and, and they knew it was going to be the opposite, and they, they, they circled it up and got it done. Twenty-one fourteen. Lancers have a seven-point advantage. 
and they get the football over on downs. We'll see what they can do. Eric Johnson brings the offense up. The single setback is Kyler Merritt, and it's a bad snap. Gets through the hands of Johnson. Merritt picks it up, makes up the number, breaks away. He's got 10. He's got 15, 20 across midfield and down at the 46-yard line. There's making something out of nothing, Ken. That's one of those plays where you... You know, you, you fumble a kickoff return, and then everybody gets past you, and then away you go. And what a run from Merritt. Yeah, ball went through the hands of Johnson, hit the turf. Merritt, standing about four yards behind Eric, picked it up, somehow broke a couple of tackles, and almost went the distance. First down and 10 at the Viking 46-yard line. They'll hand it to Kyler, right side, and he's tripped up. I think he might have slipped down. As the field's a little bit moist, Steve Stebbins was talking about it. As they, as he said, they might have overwatered the field a little bit because they had to lay some sod down. And then it rained for a couple of days, and it's a little bit wet out there. And it looked like Merritt just lost his footing after a short pickup, second down and eight ball at the 44-yard line. Second and eight, Johnson looking to throw. Plenty of time across the middle. Caught by Everett. He's going to be about a yard shy. He'll be taken down at about the 37-yard line. And that could be the final play of this third quarter as we near the 10-second mark. As Johnson looking over to the sideline, Coach Stebbins running through the play call. And that's probably going to be it. Four seconds. Three, Johnson brings the offense up. They're not going to get it off, and that's the end of the third quarter. Good ball game. Nothing decided yet. Lancers, 21. Vikings, 14. Fourth quarter next on DouglasCountySportsOnline.com. When I hear the word bistro, I flash back to Europe and immediately smell the alluring aroma of deep, rich coffee, followed by fresh baked pastries, the hearty soups. But you don't have to have a European flashback for a true bistro experience just swing into soco coffee they have the same handmade croissants bagels big fat cinnamon rolls and the breakfast sandwiches the soups the salads all homemade and all backed up with organic fair trade coffees for the european experience eat and hang out by the fire or if you're in an all-american hurry just get the drive through at soco coffee in myrtle creek on main next to advanced eye care Dell's Building Supply has been an active member of the Myrtle Creek Tri-City community for more than 50 years. Dell's is also proud to sponsor its local students and a variety of school programs, including South Umpqua High School Athletics. Owner Jeff Johnson and his staff wish all answer team success this season. Dell's Building Supply, 102 South Old Pacific Highway in Myrtle Creek. Go Lancers! Fourth quarter here in Tri-City. Brent Newton along with Ken Sherman. Far West League opener. Good ball game. South Umpqua 21. Sayuslaw 14. Lancers have not beat the Vikings in 13 years. Third down and short inside Sayuslaw territory. Johnson from the shotgun. Hands it to Merritt. Right side. First down. Stood up and taken down. But he got enough. To about the 32-yard line, first down, Lancers. There it is. Had to give Mr. Guthrie's pub there, yeah. See if we can pot up the mic there and so the fans at home can hear that. As... Man, you were saying Frosty Lowry Field. We finally got football weather after a few weeks, a 90-degree kickoffs and everything else. This is This is fun. Breeze starting to pick up a little bit. Still have my short sleeves on, but it's getting a little chilly. Reed will come in motion. Johnson will hand it off. Ooh, a little bobble by Merritt. And he's going to get a little bit of yardage inside the 30 to about the 29-yard line. Gain of about three. It's second down and seven. Matt Kennedy will come in. Merritt limping a little bit. He's jogging off, but you can tell he hurt an ankle there. Should be all right, though. So Matt Kennedy will check back into the game. Sean Rigsby lined up to the right side. Josh Reed split to the near side. Everett will come in motion. He'll line up right slot on the right side. Well, now at the end of the line, the tight end's position. He'll hand it to Kennedy. He'll follow Everett. Gets through a hole and gets to about the... 
25. So it's going to bring up third down at about three. First down marker is about the... Twenty-three yard line. So what do you call it? about third down and two? I guess third down and two for the Lancers. Pence will come into the game. That full house backfield. Pence and Thompson, along with Matt Kennedy, and they will hand the ball to Kennedy. Breaks the tackle. First down, and he's taken down. But he got enough. Boy, he got hit right at the line of scrimmage. Ken, I'm telling you what this this one-two punch is working perfect right now for the Lancers with Merritt and and Kennedy. And, you know, once in a while you throw a little pass out to Thompson. But uh, their their running game is working great for the Lancers tonight. Yeah, and another thing is it's running some time off this clock. That's the big thing, yeah. Yeah, they've yeah. already two minutes and counting here in this final quarter. 9.55 to go. SU has it. Boy, are they going to say, they say he didn't pick up the first down, Ken. Look at that. They're going to say, they're going to say his knee went down about a half yard shy. SU's going to go for it. Coming in motion is Reed. Johnson calls out the signals. They're going to hand the ball to Kennedy. He'll try that left side again. He, well, he dropped the football, but he'd hit the turf first, but he's going to pick up the first down. How did he not pick up the first down in the last run? Looks like he's got it this time. Yeah, it doesn't matter. The Lancers were able to get it. Boy, I don't even think that was close, but apparently a knee must have gone down about a half yard shy, but they pick it up on fourth down. So the ball will be placed inside the 25. We'll just see about the 21 yard line. The field's not marked here, so you've got to start counting. Find midfield and start counting down. Penalty flag will come in. They'll try the right side with Kennedy, but flag came in early. Might have been some motion on the Lancers. Clock will stop with 9.15 to go. Want to say congratulations to September's Booster Club athletes and students of the month in cross country, Ashley Orozco and John Valdivinos. Football, Jordan McDevitt and Mason Ronan. Cheer, uh, cheerleader Brittany Briggs from the volleyball squad, McKenzie Davis, and from the soccer teams, Nathan Galinsky and Becca Carnes. Freshman student of the month, George Dentleman. Congratulations, George. Christina Johnson, the sophomore. Junior William Warner and senior Tanner Pence. Congratulations to all of September's Booster Club athletes and students of the month. Holding call there on the Lancers. We'll back him up a little bit. The holding call will put the ball all the way back to the, what about the 31? Spot foul, boy, what is it going to be? First and 22, I guess. Johnson looking to throw near side, pump fakes, then he throws to a, Cameron Everett, who is triple covered, and here comes the penalty flag in late. Well, he forced that one in there. Good coverage, but apparently somebody got there too quick. Yeah, it was uh, Kristen Jacobson out there on the on the coverage, and he was all over the back of Everett, and, and kind of I think it was a little bit of a hold right there too, because the ball was thrown right where Everett should have been, and now they'll make the discussion here. Lancers will get some of that yardage back, I think. Pass interference there on set on Slaw. That's going to be inside the 20 to about what it looks like. What about the 16-yard line? First down is around the 10. And good news, Merritt back in the ball game now after limping off earlier. Yard markers on the opposite side of the field. We'll call it a first down and six. Johnson in and out of his hands again. Merritt can't pick it up, so Johnson will dive on the football all the way back about the 28-yard line. And Boy, just going each play, <laughs> 10 yards one way and 10 the other. That's the negative for the Lancers, so it's going to bring up second down now, and 
all of a sudden, you're right back to where you were a minute ago. Second down and about 18. And that's where some of that shotgun formation hurts you sometimes. You get a bad snap. Am I missing something? Scoreboard says 14. Now, there we go. They change it. Second and 18. Johnson will hand it. Merritt right side. Gets through a hole. Nice move. Cuts it inside. 10. Picks up 15. And he gets close to a first down. Boy, Merritt got through there quickly and just turned on the Jets. Doesn't look like that, that ankle's bothering bothering him on that run, at no, least. No, that one looked really nice working on the right side. Kind of picking his way through. And once he gets out in the open, that kid's got a lot of speed. Put it out about the 12-yard line. Picked up about 16. Called it third and two. Thompson, left slot. Josh Reed to the near side. Single setback is Kyler Merritt. Johnson calls out the signal, so hand it to Merritt. Nice little move. Dives forward. He's going to have the first down as he gets inside the 10. The Lancers have it first and goal with 7.36 to go in this one. This would be big if they could run some more time off the clock, get another score, get up by a couple of touchdowns. So first and goal from the nine-yard line. Merritt the single set back. Reed and Nathan Thompson split to the left side. Double tight end with Everett and Cody Gray. Good snap. They'll hand it. Merritt short side of the field. Breaks the tackle. Turns the corner. Gets to the goal line. Dives in. Touchdown. South Umpqua. Kyler Merritt from nine yards out. He finally got one. And he deserves it. What a good ball game for this kid. to try the extra point Josh Bueller good pressure and it's blocked as charging in from the left side the Viking got to it extra point is no good 7.15 to go Lancers 27 Vikings 14 you're listening to Lancers football on Douglas Kennedy Sports Online.com. for over 25 years Clinton Newell Auto Group has worked to earn a name that means more than just another great deal It's important to us that our name means the best in service, maintenance and repair, and customer satisfaction. We are also proud to be part of this great community by sponsoring and helping many of the events we all know and enjoy. It's our way of saying thanks to all of you who helped Clint Newell Auto Group become Douglas County's number one dealer. Clint Newell Auto Group, where our name means more. Mmm, that coffee's good. It's so creamy. It's this new fat-free half and half from Umquad Dairy. Fat-free half and half? How's that even possible? I don't know. Magic cows? It says on the carton, Umquad Dairy's new fat-free half and half is made from real milk and is 100% oil-free, so magic cows. Huh, wonder what magic cows look like. Evidently fairly skinny. Well, that would explain the fat-free. Mm-hmm. I think I'll have another cup and extra half and half. Umquad Dairy's new fat-free half and half. It's made using local RBST free magic cows and it's not just for coffee it's a great cream substitute in your favorite recipes look for it in your grocer's dairy case today Seven fifteen to go here in this one far west league opener and right now it's the lancers on top 27 14 a nine yard touchdown run from kyler merritt the extra point block but SU on top by 13 as we near the midway point of this fourth quarter, ball teed up at the 40-yard line. Bueller kicks it deep into the corner, and it's going to be caught and taken and running out of bounds at the inside the 15-yard line. I think that was number eight, Preston Mitchell. And I, looking back, caught it over his shoulder, and just the momentum carried him out of bounds, Ken. And that's... Uh... He, he was just right along the sidelines there. And on that kickoff before, he did that too. He kind of bobbled the ball. He was so close to the sidelines. I thought he might have stepped out, but they're back deep now. So the ball's about the 14-yard line. The Lancers get the defense back out there with 7.15 to go. SU back on top. Kind of a game of runs here. SU jumped out 14 nothing. 
Vikings tied it at 14. And now 13 unanswered by the home team. 27-14. The boys from Tri-City leading it by 13. Dotson up under center. He's going to hand the football. First back through hit. Driven back. Pence just spins him down. As Tanner Pence grabbed Billy Jones and spun him down. Face mask first into the turf. And that's going to be no gain. Second down for the Vikings. They've got to score twice here. They've had some success throwing the ball. They'll try the option, pitch it left side. Good crack back block. But Jones can't get very far as Jerry Atherton. Great pursuit. The big guy just following that one all the way to the far sideline. And Jerry showing his speed for the big kid. Where's number 64? 6-3-2-65. Third down, call it eight. Dotson, no huddle, up under center, back split behind him. He's going to roll near side, looking to throw. Waits for his receiver to finish the route. Boy, that's a slow developing play, but it works. Catching the pass on the near side is number three, Scott Gordon. First down. Sayusla, just giving him too much cushion, Ken. Yeah, he just he had kind of rolled out, just waited for his uh, receiver to make the break, and as soon as he as soon as he went into the break, he threw the ball hard right over to the sidelines, and lands are too far back. A big third down conversion for the Vikings. Now there's that just quick hitter and a nice run as that's Jacobson as Bueller got him up high. And Kramer got him down low. Jacobson doesn't feel too good after that one. Looks like that knee might be bruised a little bit as he's limping around, but he's going to stay in the game. As I said, Kramer got him low, and Jacobson in some discomfort out there. He's going to stay, though, in the football game. He picked up the first down, dropping straight back. Now running out of the pocket, chased from behind by Thompson. He'll break away. He'll tuck it under, get the first down, gets by Buchanan, far sideline, and runs out of bound inside SU territory to the 45. That was all Joseph Dotson. And the Lancers have had him at bay pretty much all night long, and that's the first positive uh, type of run there for Dotson as he gets quite a few yards there on the keeper. One positive for SU, the clock, it's only 5.48 to go on this one, or at least in regulation. Dotson up under center. Okay, that's not Dotson. That looks like, is that Mitchell? Hands the football off. I think that is Preston Mitchell at quarterback now, or at least for of, that play. Yeah, a little bit of Wildcat going on over there for a minute. Yeah, that's Mitchell. So is that Thrall now in the backfield? So they're changing things up. I wonder if Dotson got hurt on that run. Mitchell. Up under center, second down from the 45-yard line. Call it second at about seven. He'll keep it around the corner, and he turns the corner, dives towards the chains. He's going to be close to another Viking first down. Yeah, when Dotson on that play, when he got up, he ran right over to the sidelines like something was going on. He's going to be short, so Mitchell got about within a half yard it's third down and short so Mitchell new quarterback doing the job success early on checking out the SU defense third down and short up under center back split behind him Mitchell straight drop looking to throw does caught first down hit by Buchanan and dropped right where the receiver caught it also on the stop was that Eric Johnson who else is out there yeah, I think that's Eric Johnson back there as well on the stop, shaking his right hand. That's not good. No, that's, that's his thrown hand. Yeah. So Eric playing a little defense now. First down and ten for the Vikings. There's a little miscommunication as he looked like he he put it in the chest of the running back, but he wanted to pull it out, but the running back wouldn't let him. So he kind of grabbed the football and the quarterback went through the hole with him. Short gain, second down, clock moving, 420 and counting.
Buchanan sprints off the field for SU. Vikings get up to the line quickly. Boy, a lot of time coming off. They're going to throw the football. Open, caught, hit by Kramer. Stood up and taken down inside the 20, inside the 15 to about the 12-yard line. Just wide open in that little zone there. Just drops behind the linebackers and in front of the defensive back. And Mitchell hit him perfectly. Boy, Mitchell doing the job. Second team quarterback. First down and 10. There's a problem, though, with that handoff. Is Jones and Mitchell. Looks like Mitchell just wants to hang on to the football, but Jones... Pulls it away from him last minute and picks up some positive yardage to about the eight-yard line. Call it second and four. It's going to be option left side. Breaks a tackle. Mitchell cuts it inside, spins, and he is into the end zone. Touchdown, Mitchell. A couple of missed tackles in the backfield, and and Mitchell, the backup quarterback, taking over and, and marches him down the field. Unofficially eight-yard touchdown run. Like they had Mitchell dead to right to the backfield, but he broke out of it and then just turned on the afterburners and he got into the end zone. It's 27-20. Now on to try the extra point. His thrall just kicks it straight on. That's old school. That's like 1970s kicking. And it is up and it is good. 3.34 to go. 27-21. Lancers by six. Just like the team that lines up and runs the ball up the middle, Shop Smart doesn't rely on fancy gimmicks or trick plays. All you'll find at your neighborhood Shop Smart are direct deals for the best prices on the products you need most. Need a first down on third and one? Pull back up the middle. Need prices on groceries that won't break the family bank? Head to Shop Smart. Proud to support today's local football. Shop Smart, where savings are in the bag. Brent Newton along with Ken Sherman, 3.34 to go here in regulation, 27-21. Lancers by six. Each team, I believe, still has all three timeouts left. Vikings very patient on that drive. And even had to their sec- get their second team quarterback to finish that drive for him. Mitchell, Preston Mitchell did the job. Got him into the end zone. This is going to be an onside kick attempt, and it's going to be loose. Uh Uh-oh, and the Vikings got it as Matt Kennedy could not control it, and the Vikings get the football. Number three, Scotty Gordon, and look at that. The Lancers got to bring that defense right back on the field, and Cameron Everett is injured. He's on his back. Looks like he might have just had the wind knocked out of him. But the Vikings have all the momentum on their side now with 3.33 to go. You know, for me personally, with an onside kick, that I think is the way to do it. Just kick it on the ground, kick it hard, and see if it'll just ricochet off someone. Seems like now a lot of college teams, pro teams, they try to pop it high in the air. But most times it just pops high in the air, and that's easier to catch for most you know, most most of the what hands team. You yeah, know, I mean, that, yeah. it's, I could catch that, but I like that. Just line drive it off the ground, and that's what he did. It just kicked it on the ground like a little grounder, and just it kind of took a little hop. Matt Kennedy was there, and it hit him right between the two and the zero, and just ricocheted off. He tried to jump on it, but three white jerseys beat him there. And they've got the football back. Mitchell will stay in at quarterback. It's first down and 10. Barely inside Vikings territory. It's at the 48-yard line. So 52 yards to tie this one up. Mitchell hit immediately. And did he get it? Boy, he got the handoff somehow to Jones. Boy, he got, he was hit. He was, there's a black jersey hanging on to him when he was trying to hand the football to Jones. Short gain across midfield. We'll call it three yards. Second down and seven, 315 and counting. Vikings have all their timeouts. Mitchell directing traffic. 
Ball on the near hash mark. Now Dotson back in the game. He's lining up in the backfield. And now a timeout, Vikings. A little confusing there. And then, you know, what helps What helps on this particular area right now is is the ball boy coming in, bringing the ball in, and and another and taking it back out again. So it's killing some more time. And and if you're a Lancer fan, you want to you want that clock to go as fast as it can right now because Sayuslaw is starting to get a little bit of a roll here, and we're in for a dandy of a finish. 27-21, Lancers by six, but the Vikings got the onside kick. They recovered it. Game three on the first play, and it's second down and seven. And the Vikings did use their first timeout. They still have two remaining. There's plenty of time. They're 49 yards away from tying this one up. The extra point would give them the one-point lead, and the Lancers have to figure out a way to stop the Vikings. And Mitchell, who came in at to replace an injured Dotson has done the job. Pitches it to Jones. Far side gets the block. Turns the corner. 45 pushed out of bounds near the first down marker. Depends on where he went out. I think he's going to be a little shy at about the 42 yard line. And it will be a third down and one. But more importantly he got out of bounds to stop the clock at 301. Lancer fans, a little bit quiet. They, they are, there we go. Now they're trying to get behind their defense. Third down and short. Mitchell calls out the signal. So throw near side. It's caught and hit immediately and dropped by Tristan Gross. But it's going to be enough for the first down. That was Dotson on the receiving end. The quarterback through the first three-plus quarters. And it's a first down and 10 at the 38 yard, I'll call it the, yeah, 38 yard line. First down and 10. Quickly, the Vikings bring the offense up near hash mark. Going to hand the ball to Jones. There's that problem again as Jones, I mean, literally, Mitchell is hanging on to the football. And as Jones is hanging on with him, he literally is dragging his quarterback along. I mean, he was just, he still had both hands on it, did the quarterback. Short gain. That's. That Nobody wants to give fumble. up the bread. Yeah, yeah. That, that's going to end up in a fumble. Uh, Mitchell, this is only a second series. The backup quarterback, second down and nine. Fakes the handoff. Got pressure. Gray got him and sacked him. Back to the original line of scrimmage. Gray just charging in from the left side. And he throws him down for a loss of two back to the... 40, well, 41, loss of two, so it's third down and 11, two down territory, clock moving, 157 and counting. Mitchell up under center, Dotson lined up to the near side, straight drop, looking to throw, throws it low, it is caught, but he went down to his knees to catch it inside the 35 to the 34 yard line, it's going to bring up fourth down. And about seven or eight, 135 in counting. They're going to go for it. Lancer fans didn't like that. They thought the ball was on the ground. Fourth down. This is the ball game, folks. Mitchell up under center. Fourth and six. Rolling out near side. Plenty of time. Throws. It is incomplete. He had a receiver at about the 10-yard line, but he threw it to the sideline. Black jerseys were all around it, and the Lancers... Hold on fourth down. And the receiver going down, and if he had thrown it accurately, but the receiver didn't even turn around for the ball. The ball fell behind him, and had a big play there for the Lancers now with a minute 22. Just eat up the clock down. You've got yourself a victory. 27-21. The Vikings will use their final two timeouts, so they can get the football back, but one first down should do it for the Lancers. Johnson brings the offense up. Merritt, the single setback. Just like elementary school, both hands on the ball. Reed to the near side, Rigsby wide to the right. Johnson will hand the football, Merritt, and he's going to be hit and taken down for a loss, but that'll just 
wipe away one of the timeouts for the Vikings, so they'll use their second timeout. Clock will stop with 76 seconds to go. 1.16 to go here. 27-21 Lancers. It's second down, a loss of two, so second and 12. Last season, Sayusla defeated South Umpqua 28-21 in Florence. Right now it's 27-21 South Umpqua here in Tri-City. Trying to end a 13-game losing streak to the Vikings. And just to show you how much South Umpqua's defense is playing, I mean, this team coming in averaging 40 points a game. They scored... Big on Newport. They scored 49 against Newport. Then they had to come back with less than a minute to go to beat Sayo. And then 49 points against Hidden Valley. So here we go. Second down at 12. Vikings still have a timeout remaining. They could get the football back. They'll hand the ball Merritt. Can he get around the corner? He breaks a tackle. Splits a couple of defenders and gets to about the original line of scrimmage, maybe plus a yard. And now the Vikings will use their final timeout. Merritt ran a lot to pick up three yards on that one. <laughs> and that's the final timeout for the Vikings with 1.05 to go. And it's third down and nine for the Lancers. All right, Coach Brent. What do you do now? They, they have no timeouts. <laughs> uh, you got to keep it on the ground. But exactly. The problem is you're going to have to get your punt team on there. And at this level, you know, there could be all kinds of trouble with the snap. And, you know, the Vikings still have a chance, folks. There's They're out of timeouts. But the Lancers have it third down and nine. They can pick up a first down at the 44-yard line. The ball right now is at the 35. So third down and nine. Steve Stebbins talks to his offense. 105 to go. They cannot run out the clock. You have to pick up a first down or the defense is going to have to head back out there. They're going to fake the handoff. Johnson will take it near side, and he gets to the 40 and goes down there. He'll get some help up from the defensive back for the Sayuslaw Vikings, number 22, Brad Snow. Got the big cast on his hand. <laughs> so it's fourth down and four. Lancers offense staying out there for a while. They're just going to run the clock down, 43 seconds. We'll see how long they can or how much time they can get off the clock before the delay of game. Exactly, yeah. As we near the 30-second mark, the back judge looking at his watch, still staring down at it, 27. Now a hand goes up, so well, I don't know why they would call a timeout there. Or is that a five-second? Was that the five-second count, I yeah. guess, when his hand goes up? I'd say just run it down as long as you can. 25.1 seconds, so... They will have to punt the football. You know the Vikings are coming after this one. 25.1 seconds remain. Now your defense just has to step up just one more time here. Make sure that the holes are set so Eric Johnson can boom one. And hopefully... He gets settled out of bounds, maybe like a two-yard line or somewhere like that. And this, I believe, is the first punt of the ball game for the Lancers. Yes, yeah. Yeah, we had the long field goal to try, and that was about it. One interception, and they've lost the ball. And they, uh, they've given it over on downs a couple of times, so this will be the first punt of the game. Eric Johnson, the quarterback, does the punting chores. He's standing back at the 26-yard line. He's got three guys in front of him, Ronan, McDevitt, and Pence. 
They're going to come after it. High snap. Johnson's got it. Pressure. He got it away. Booming kick. It's returnable, though. Boy, he got into it. Hits at the 10 or at the 15, and they're just going to let it bounce. And down it there. Boy, great punt by Eric Johnson. So 13.4 seconds remain. Ball will be placed at the 14-yard line. So 86 yards to go for the win. The Vikings... They're more of a running team, so you know the Lancers, they're going to play some deep center field in this one. Eric Johnson back there, also Matt Kennedy. Eric Kramer. They're back around the 35-yard line, so they're about 20-plus yards from the line of scrimmage. Three receivers to the near side. I believe that's Dotson back in at quarterback. Drops back, looking to throw deep near side, lobs it up near midfield. Going up for it is Kennedy. I think it's, is it caught? Right about the 44-yard line. Are they going to say incomplete? Boy, the officials don't know what the call is. Kennedy was battling with the Receiver, they're going to say incomplete pass with five-tenths of a second left. Boy, yeah, almost a catch and almost an interception. Kennedy was over on the back side of him. Over, He reached over his back to try to just knock the ball away or intercept it. And how that receiver came down, I thought he might have come down with the ball. That was a that would have been a great catch. Yeah, he almost. it looked like he did. It must have hit the turf. The officials discussed it for a while. Now Steve Stebbins walks out onto the field. Five-tenths of a second remains, so the Vikings are going to get one more shot at it here. And that SU defense, look at that. They've only got three guys, four guys at the line of scrimmage. Lancers have seven guys back from the 30-yard line back to the about the 37. They've only got four guys at the line of scrimmage. Bat, dropping back, goal line. He's going to throw it up, same spot, near about midfield, and it's going to be incomplete. And that is it. The Lancers break the streak. 13 straight years losing to the Vikings, and they get the win 27-21. The Lancers will head out to midfield to congratulate the Vikings the young men from Florence, congratulations to Steve Steppens going 1-0 in the Far West League. 27-21 Lancers. Post game next on DouglasCountySportsOnline.com. Did you know Dutch Bros Coffee roasts all of their own coffee fresh every day? We have individual relationships with the farmers that harvest our coffee to ensure that there's no compromise in any step of the process. From the farmer to the cup, we guarantee satisfaction. It says so at the bottom of every cup. Drive through one of our convenient locations today and put our world-renowned speed, award-winning service, and unprecedented quality to the test. All of our locations are locally owned and operated to strengthen community involvement. Visit www.dutchbros.com today. Hear what one of Avista's customers has to say about energy efficiency. I'm John, and my wife, Roberta, and I bought this house about 10 years ago. This is an older home, and we decided to work with it to increase efficiency when we could. We've changed some appliances and worked with our utility company to get some rebates. I think we believe firmly that enough people in town making small choices adds up to a big collective impact. Join the effort and start saving today. Download rebate forms at everylittlebit.com. When it's time to huddle up the team for a family meal, make sure your game plan includes a trip to Ray's Food Place. Your home team needs a hometown store, and that's how Ray's got started in 1956. A good home team needs the perfect combination of offense, defense, and special teams. And Ray's Food Place scores best with great pricing, quality products, and friendly service. Ray's is proud to sponsor today's local football action. Ray's Food Place, family-owned, family values since 1956. To recognize the achievements of every student, that's the mission of the South Umpqua High School Booster Club. Each year, the boosters bring awareness to the community about student achievements. Get involved. Visit a booster club meeting on the second Monday of the month at the district office starting at 6.30 in the evening. 
South Umpqua High hosts 13 sporting activities from the fall through spring sessions. Contact Lisa Lemming at 580-8405. Support your community. Support South Umpqua Booster Club. Twenty-seven, twenty-one. Lancers pull off the victory. They win it by six. Hard-fought win for SU. They go to three and one on the season. More importantly, one and zero oh in the Far West League. The Vikings suffer their first defeat of the 2014 campaign. They're zero oh and one in the Far West. Three and one overall. As the Lancers jumped out to a seven to nothing lead. Cameron Everett, a five-yard touchdown strike from Eric Johnson. The kick by Bueller was good. It was 7 nothing, and that was the only score of the first quarter, a fast-moving first quarter as both teams kept it on the ground. Kennedy went from uh, scored from three yards out. The Bueller extra point made it 14 nothing. It looked like the Lancers might run away with it, but the Vikings able to march down the field. They went 85 yards, capped off by a 14-yard touchdown strike from Dotson to Mitchell, the thrall extra point made it 14-7, to and that was our score at the break. Sayusla would tie it in the third quarter on a four-yard touchdown run from their talented uh, tailback, Billy Jones. The extra point tied it up at 14, but SU then would score back-to-back times. A four-yard touchdown pass from Eric Johnson to Nathan Thompson. The Josh Bueller extra point, it was 21 to 14. That was our score heading into the final quarter. The Lancers would stretch the lead. A nine-yard touchdown run from Kyler Merritt. The extra point was blocked. It was 27-14. But after an injury to starting quarterback Joseph Dotson, uh, the backup quarterback came into the game, that being Preston Mitchell, and he would march the team down the field. He would cap it off with an eight-yard touchdown run. The extra point got him within six. They would get the ensuing kickoff, an onside kick, but... The defense held, they turned it over on downs, and the Lancers hold on for the 27-21 win. And a big play for Cody Gray in that in that possession for for Sayusta. Looked they were like they were going to move down the field, but then on a on a third down play, a, a big play up the middle from Cody Gray to get the sack and drop it back where they couldn't get into it. And uh, just a just a great ball game from both teams. Um, if you look at the stats, I bet you there's. Over 100 yards for uh, for each one of the running backs there. But uh, a lot of sportsmanship shown by Sayus Law, picking everybody up off the ground. And, in fact, the SU Water Boys dropped their bottles on the last time out, and one of the kids came over and, and put the water bottle back in. So uh, great ball game here with no cannon. Everybody was talking about where's the cannon and, every, you know, and, and uh, you got yourself a, a win this year, Brent. Yeah, I know. Exciting. The Lancers yeah. 1-0 in the far west I want to know what's out of them now. Maybe that's should hang around for a while. Yeah, you should. Fun. You're good luck, Kenny. Maybe you go to Brookings. Well, that's right. Brookings <laughs> next Friday. And the Lancers, that is a winnable game. Brookings is 0-3. It looks like they're going to drop to 0-4. They were down at halftime, 19-0 to Marshfield. And the Lancers, if they can go to into Brookings, if they can play their football game, they're going to come out of there. It's a good chance to go to 2-0. and Then it's going to be the big game at North Bend, and then they'll finish out the league season with home games, winnable games with Marshfield and then Douglas. So really, if they, they set themselves up nicely with this big win tonight, and you know it's got to give this team a bunch of confidence, Ken. Uh, it does. You know, they're, they're the number three team in the OSAA Power Rankings. They came in here undefeated. But the Lancers are ready to play. I mean, their their ground game in the first half worked, and it continued uh, throughout the ball game. And the one-two punch in that backfield is fun to watch. Those kids uh, are going to be fun to watch all year long if you're a Lancer fan. So congratulations to the uh, the Lancers here in Tri City. It was finally a night for football. It's cold out here. It's not a 90 degree kickoff day. Um, people are out here with their jackets on. You know, it's, it's football weather and. Congratulations to the Lancers and Coach Stebbins on a, yeah, on a great win. And Coach Stebbins, to show you what a what a, a good coach he is, he's really a guy who's got a, a 
an offense. It's more of a it's a it's more of a passing offense. But he knows he doesn't have the same team as he did last year, so he gr- he was going to grind it out, and that's what he did. He had the size advantage up front, and you mentioned the tandem of Matt Kennedy, the senior tailback, and Kyler Merritt, the junior running back. Uh, they did the job tonight. That offensive line credit, that big offensive line, Mason Ronan, Jordan McDevitt, Trevor McDuffie, Tyler Vay, and Caleb Newton. They did the job, and they get the victory 27-21. to 21. Ken, we're going to go eat some Abby's Pizza. Sounds good to me. All yeah. right. Kenny had a good time with you. For Kenny Sherman, I'm Brent Newton. Hope you enjoyed the broadcast. The final again, South Thumbquad 27 and Sayuslaw 21. You've been listening to Lancers Football on Douglas County Sports Online.